the biggest game of the year thus far for them. I'll break it down why. I'm not just going to throw that out there and say, biggest game of the year, oh! Really, it is the biggest game of the year. Of course, I'm joined with my cousin, Vladimir Lewis. I am Dan Day. Let's break it down, Vlad. Number one, you and the Pacers right there at the sixth seed in the East, meaning you can avoid a play-in game. The Pacers are half a game up on you, meaning that if you win today, you take over sole possession of sixth place and for the time being, do not have to worry about a play-in game that we know anything can happen. Also means that you would be in the sixth seed with just four games left to play. Tuesday, the Atlanta Hawks. Winnable game. Wednesday, Dallas Mavericks come to town. Tough game. And then the last two games, Friday and Sunday, the Raptors will be in town. You should be eight. All right. In all honesty, you should go two and two. Oh, in all honesty, you should go after, three after and one. After tonight. After tonight. If you can win tonight, you got to go three and one. You got to go three and one. Three and one is good because do you have, uh, if they win, they, they would have the tie break over Indy? Yes, I'm pretty sure they would, actually. So then, yes, you got to win. You have to win tonight so that you can go three and one. It could be two and two because Atlanta's been playing very well and Dallas has been really, really playing well over the last yeah, month and a half. got to man up and beat Dallas. And then I really think you should be able to sweep Toronto at home. Like, they, Toronto, I've been saying this, they're one, if you have a team that's been thinking one, two, three, Cancun, you know what's better than one, two, three, Cancun? One, two, three, South Beach, then Cancun. I don't even think they count down. They just go, South Beach. One, two, three, South Beach to Cancun. That's what I think. Here's so I mean. you got to win today. Today's so important. It's, it, it, is, it is the most important game okay. of the season. Sky in the pie. We went out the rest of the season. We get hot. We get the six seed. We run through the playoffs. We're good. Let's go down to earth and be a little more realistic. Pacers today up in Indiana. You take care of business because you're the Miami Heat and because you got Eric Spolster and because you got Jimmy Butler and you got Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero is back and you need this game and you just have better pedigree than the Pacers and you've had their number historically. Boom. Now you're in the sixth seed. Atlanta Hawks, they are a dangerous team. They can score a lot of points. They don't play a lick of defense. You go to their place. You find a way to win. Survive in advance, as they say, even though it's, this isn't the tournament. Mavericks, I'll give the Mavericks credit. They're darn good, and they're darn good around this time of the year. They get you at home, but then you get the last two against the Raptors. You close out the season doing what you got to do. You win four of the last five. You get the sixth seed, and you are looking good going into the playoffs. That, to me, is realistic, and that, to me, if you're a Heat fan, you should be very happy with. Am I correct with that? You should be. You should be. You're going to lose one of those games probably in there because that's the team you are. Okay, I'm sorry if you're saying, Dan, you're, you're not homer enough or anything like that. Most teams aren't going to win out the last five, six games of the season. Even the best of teams don't go on win streaks usually like that. So let's not get too crazy. You lose one of them in there. Maybe it's the Mavericks. Maybe it's the Hawks. But hopefully you can win those last two games against the Raptors. Today, though, makes it square right in the crosshairs. The most important game of the year for the Miami Heat. It is not a must win because you still get into the playoffs in some way, shape, or form, but it's a win that you really, really would like to have and want to have. Huge game for the Miami Heat and this season and how the postseason will play out. You lay a dud today, Vlad, and things start looking very, very shaky. No, nah, you lay a dud. It looks shaky. Shaky's not even a word, bro. Man. Like, you lay a dud today, especially when a game when you know you're like, this is it. Like, you're supposed to be thinking playoffs right now. You're supposed to be in playoff mode. Right. I think a lot of teams should be in playoff mode right now, especially if you're competing for uh seeding. If you don't want to make the you don't want to make the playing, you don't want to play in the playing game. Maybe there's certain teams you don't want to face. Maybe there's a certain team you do want to face. So seeding's very important. And look, after Atlanta, you in the next three at home. Yeah. You know, uh, you finished the season. You couldn't ask for anything more. Three home games, two of them against a Raptors team. And Atlanta's what, run. like a two hour flight? It's not even yeah, that it, long. It, yeah, like you can't around. even really. But remember, Atlanta's holding on to that 10 seed right well, now. Well, they got it. They're, it's already they're they're, five and a half. They're five yeah, they're in. they're in. They know they're there. The, the, everybody knows where they're at. Right. Atlanta and Chicago know they're playing in the playing. They're playing that first playing game. Where right. The no, home. They know that they're that. Now Ooh. it's between Philadelphia, Ooh. Indiana, Miami, about. Whoa. The six seed. 
what happens if you lose today and for some reason you end up in that 7-8 game against the 76ers? Are you confident in that after what you saw the other night? No, I wouldn't be confident. So then, let's say you lose. I'm not saying they will, but let's say you lose. Now it's a winner go home against the winner of the Hawks or the Bulls. We saw how that played out last year. Shaky is the word. Is that the word we're going to use today? If things start going south, this is going to be a very shaky. If you lose today, shaky team. Shaky, shaky. Mm. So, yeah, Vlad, you said it yesterday, and I'm backing it up. Most important game of the year. No hyperbole here. No, it's not hyperbole. It's not. Because you lose. You lose the tiebreaker to Indy. Yep. Probably have to play you tie. You, you had a chance to have the tiebreak advantage over Philly, but they won the last two. So they get the home game. They may get if, the home game. Whoever is the seventh the, seed, whoever is the seventh seed will have the home game. <sighs> and then whatever happens to you in the Hawks, you might have to play the Hawks again. Yeah, Ugh. because if you lose that 7-8, you're going to have to play the the winner of the 9-10. Seriously. This so game you're going to be huge, back in the same situation you were last season. Huge implications. And right the here. question is, are you a better team last year than you were this year? I think you are. I really do think they are a better so team. So then, therefore, if you lose in the play-in or you lose in the first round, this has been a disappointing season. Watching a little bit of Premier League. Oh, Liverpool just scored. Richie. Yeah, Salah gets a penalty kick late in the 84th. Oh, this is some good drama here. 84th minute, Man U, Liverpool. Liverpool's up 1-0. Man U came back 2-1 just now. Salah makes a – Mohamed Salah for Liverpool makes a penalty kick in the 84th minute. It is now 2-2 in Premier League. I know it's, that's big here in South Florida and apparently in Richmond, Virginia too, but that's huge right there. Some good stuff, man. Some good stuff. Oh, I mean, I was talking to someone yesterday about soccer, and they're like, well, you know, people in the United States just don't watch soccer. I said, that isn't true at all. People in the United States do watch soccer and care about soccer. They, you're an outlier. I said, come on now. Yeah. MLS is a brand new league. I said, it's been around for about 25 years, 30 years. That's new. Wait, wait let me ask you this. Is this person American? No, they're from Venezuela. Oh, okay. Which also, which not, is, not the greatest soccer country in the world, by the way. The only South American country to never make the World Cup. Just saying. Hopefully, Luis Arias does well today. We need Vlad. They got great baseball players. I was so angry. Oh, great baseball player. Luis Arias. Come on, man. My boy. Who's your guy? I think Juan Soto. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Oh, man. Um, He's Dominican. I got, I got I got, sidetracked a little bit. We, we talked about soccer. The Heat must win. Not must win. Most important game of the year. And Venezuela soccer slash baseball. Okay, good. No, no. Juan is Dominican. But, I mean, there's great Venezuelan players. So. Oh, you want to talk about Jose Altuve? Maybe the greatest mm. Venezuelan of all time? Yeah, I hate him, though. Don't you hate on Jose Altuve? That's Mighty Mouse. Yeah, well, Mighty Mouse has been... Killing my Yankees oh, for okay. years. That's okay to hate him for that reason. I thought you were going to hate him for those cheats. Like nobody steals paper Everybody cheats. Toys. Yeah. Everybody cheats. Come on. Jose Altuve, probably the greatest Venezuelan player of all time, but Luis Arise, he's our guy. Vlad, I really, man, I, I really went to my phone yesterday because I was taking care of some things around the Obviously, house. the greatest Venezuelan baseball player is Miguel Cabrera. So we can't we can't crap on him because what he did, Mig, what Miggy did. Well, you here. got the triple crown, yeah. That's and he was, you know, he helped win the 03 World Series. So yeah, yeah. You we'll know. give it to him local Florida. I mean, Jose Altuve, right? There. And of course, you know, it's not like Ronald Acuna Jr. right now. It's not the you know one of the top five best baseball players of all time. Yeah, Omar Vizquel, great Venezuelan baseball players, but nonetheless, back to the Heat. Most important game for the Heat right this season it's gotta be. is tonight. It's today, this afternoon, 5 p.m. You can listen to it here on 560 WQAM uh, with Alejandro Solano with at 345 with uh, Preheat. And then at 4.30, Tommy Ty has the network pregame portion. And then our boy Jax has the great sound starting at 5 p.m. But, yeah, this is the most important game at Indy. This is big. You're going against uh, All-Star Halliburton, who seems to be getting playing a little bit better because he had – it seemed to me after the All-Star break, he hit a he hit a, a, a low, and but he's starting to play better. The team can go up and down. So I want to see – can they – this is the problem. This is a fear we're going to have, right? You know Andy can't play defense. No, they don't want to. And they can score. But what happens if you can't – what happens if this is a you know up-and-down game? And this is a game where you – once again, the lid's on the basket sometimes for the Heat. And then you're going to start looking at, oh, why can't we score? You know, why we can't score? Mm -hmm. So this is a game to me where Terry Rozier, this is a game where Tyler Hero, 
you, you know, you played very well in game one. They don't play defense, so you should be able to get the shots and 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 the uh, anything you want offensively. Yeah, another thing is no excuses today. You have to be in playoff mode. You can't. Say you better score game, hundred more than hundred ten points. You can't points. say this game snuck up on you. That's what I'm no. saying. If you lose this game, you're on shaky ground. No, and you should be able to score hundred ten points. If you're not able to score oh. hundred ten over in, against Indy, then <sighs> then yeah, yeah, I'm gonna start. Like I said, shaky. Shake, shaky's the op operative word. That's the word. We had a big day yesterday, and not just in the sports world, the world in general. Before we get to the headlines, Vlad, let's play a montage and throw it down and kind of wrap it all up. Wrap it up. Inter Miami defending the goal towards the left in front of their ultras. This is where we Big skills. This will sell more coffee than Starbucks. The Panthers in white, right to left. Boston in black, left to right. We are off and running here at TD Garden. Ding, ding, the cafe. Well, he's got a man that flirted with a 400 average leading off for them. The batting champion, Luis Arise. The fly ball center field. Victor's got the second, says I'll take it. A little skip and a hop, and he makes the gap. Top of the 18, one cut shot. Oh! Straight foot shot off the cue. Messi in the corner. We're tied at one. What a ball from Negri. What a finish from Messi. And Purdue has one more step down Redemption Road. The team that lost last year to a 16 will play on Monday for a national title. Purdue 63, North Carolina State 50. The inbound to Ross and UConn's KNC history. One win away from a repeat national championship. And the Cardinals win it. It's a 3-1 final score. Outstanding pitching for the Cardinals. More bad luck for the Marlins, who fall to 0-9. And Jimmy tomorrow. The birds go for a sweep. I would have taken the 2 2 draw based on the lineup that I saw prior to the game. Well, that's the final score from Chase Stadium in Fort Lauderdale. Inter Miami 2, the Colorado Rapids 2. She ripped away. Boquist along. It's down to our left. Near circle. Elena shot. He scores. Top shelf. Yes, for Boquist. Boston takes it 3 2 in overtime. Ah, a bunch of thrillers yesterday for the most part in South Florida sports. Heat and the Pacers, they do face off today at 5 o'clock. Indiana, that half game up on Miami for the sixth spot in the East. The Panthers, they came back in the third period with a goal, but it wasn't enough as Jesper Boquist got an overtime goal, giving Boston Bruins a 3-2 win. Next up, the lowly Ottawa Senators, Tuesday at 7. That game was very well matched yesterday, Vlad. I watched a little bit of it, the Bruins and the Panthers, and I thought that both teams were pretty well evenly matched. That was a good game. It was a great game. It was a good Uh, You know what? Third period was good. It first two periods, they well, trying to get it ebb and flow. It was Boston really, was a little more physical. I yeah, thought, but the third the first, period was great. It was very uh, exciting and um, you know tough overtime loss, but uh, you get the point. You do get the point, but the, I don't. That's you're not going to win the division now. That's okay. Now you're going to probably face Tampa. I mean uh, Toronto. Yeah, well, we knew it was Toronto or Tampa pretty much anyway. So, you know, got to play good teams. We'll be all right. Super sub, Lionel Messi. That's right. He came in as a sub yesterday. It took him just about 12 minutes for him to get that goal that he needed. And he, has, he threw in an assist as Inter Miami played to a 2 2 draw against the Colorado Rapids. At the end of the game, a young female fan rushed the field. She took a selfie with Messi. We're going to get into that later. I don't know how I feel about it. I do know how I feel about the Marlins. Just sad. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, lad. I really thought I was going to open my phone and be like, because I was, like I said, I had some things going on at the house. Open my phone and be like, all right, finally the Marlins win. Nope, they're 0 9. They fell 3 to 1 to the Cardinals yesterday. They didn't score till the eighth inning, by the way. The Fish play St. Louis today at 2 15. Not the worst start ever. One time the Baltimore Orioles started 0 21, like back in the day. 
But only one team has ever started 0-9 or 0-10 and had a winning record. The Astros like in 1988 or something like that. So not looking great for the Marlins. Dolphins have signed defensive end Tier Tart, who started 36 games for the Titans since 2020. Tart did play collegiately at FIU. Mario Cristobal says backup quarterbacks Emory Williams and Reese Poffenbarger are nipping at the heels of Washington State transfer Cam Ward. The spring game is this coming Saturday, 4 p.m. Cobb Stadium stop, on campus. Stop. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, we're going to bring Cam Ward in, pay him a million couple dollars, and uh, there's going to be a quarterback battle. You're all right. You know what I mean? Women's College Basketball National Championship today at three between Iowa and South Carolina. The men's last night, we said it, we predicted it, Vlad. Purdue defeated NC State 63-50 while UConn outlasted Alabama 86-72 National Championship. 9-20 tomorrow. Good for the West Coast. What do you mean? Good for the, it's great for the West Coast. I know, but I'm saying 920 on the East Coast, it's like, all right. I mean, it's always been 920. I know, I'm just saying. I mean, it, it's, not, not, it's nothing new. Now, this is what I would tell you. I am shocked that the women's game is this afternoon because back in the days, the women's game used to be a night game yeah. on Tuesday night, and what, then they changed the, that. What's in the way? I mean, you got WWE, um, WrestleMania, but there's something else that ESPN's showing. Is it... I can't remember what they're showing tonight. Uh, but Major I'll, League Baseball? They might have Major League Baseball. That's at 7 it. It's Rangers Astros at 7. I That's thought. it. That's all they're showing. I thought there was something else. That they no, were this is about. always Sunday Night Baseball, but I can underst- I've can i always understood that. I've always, always understood that. They used to have, before we used to be on Tuesday nights because the, yeah, the final four games true. would have been on Sunday, but they changed it. They had the final four games on Friday. I would have put this um, night game. You're getting Caitlin Clark versus the undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks. Right, the bullies. The bullies. And, yeah, I would have just – this. I think they missed – they jumped uh, – they missed the boat here on the past two years. you make that early programming, eh, it'll come back to bite you sometimes. Because on even Sunday afternoon, on a beautiful day like it is right now in South Florida, I think people might want to step out and enjoy the beauty of, of the outdoors. Right. So, but if you put it – evening what's going on tonight i mean yeah we have wwe night too but that's a ple you have to have you know you either gonna do it on pay-per-view or have the streaming service but this is free cable baby yeah this is esp you know this is this is the chance of a lifetime right now they i think they they i think they dropped the ball on this one yeah Kane's baseball team, they dropped the ball yesterday, losing to Duke 5-4. to four. They attempt to salvage a game from that series. That's going to start at 1 o'clock. MSC Cruises Japanese Grand Prix took place last night, Vlad. Finish it out. Uh, Mr. What's his name, Max? Yeah, Max Verstappen. Dominant. MVS? Dominant. The real MVS? Just dominant, by the way. Again? It was a no-brainer. He, he decided to have breaks. Do, do, even gamb- like, do people even gamble on F- F1? And if so, what's like you probably have to lay a million dollars to win yeah, one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so he just dominated too. He just way. dominated. Jeez. Uh, and the U.S. women's national team did defeat Japan 2 1 in the She Believes Cup that was in Atlanta last night. Japan scored in the first minute of the game. It didn't stop the U.S. women. They went up, just kept coming at them 2 1. With that being said, it just keeps coming at you. It is the day spa. <laughs> The island of Alicuddy in Italy, their mayor is dealing with a bad goat overpopulation, so he will now allow residents to keep whatever goats that they catch on the streets. Okay. Let them do the work, you know? Okay. Would you like to have a pet goat? No. <laughs> it's just asking, man. No. I'm sure, a lot of people are going to eat those goats. Although, I don't know if feral goats are exactly good eating. Cabrit's good, man. Nah, I mean, I'm Creole, not. we call them cabrit. 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 Up I got a goat, but, I, but it's not my thing, though. Uh, I've eaten goat a couple yeah. times in my life. Yeah. I, don't know that. I am a goat. Oh, well, there you go. That's always good. Speaking of the goat, the goat might be returning to Miami. Some people say he's the goat. Some people say he's not. Could the James Ooh. family? Could the James family be coming back to MIA? Some people say yay. Some people say nay. We'll talk about it next here on Sports Day 560 WQAM. Go.
Sports Day on 560 WQAM. Miami Heat, huge game tonight. They have to score against a team that knows how to score but also doesn't know how to play defense. Put yourself in sixth place. Control your own destiny. Have everything right there in front of you. It's all in your hands. All you got to do is go into Indiana tonight. Get that big win. See how that goes. Men, take it as it comes. Of course, in the sports world, one of the big stories this coming week, which we've kind of touched on, but I want to get into right now, is Bronny James. That's right, LeBron James's son. He has now announced that he will enter the NBA draft. He will also and the transfer portal. Yes, he will also keep his eligibility and enter the transfer portal after just one season at USC. Had kind of pedestrian numbers at USC, but let me tell you, a little bit of devil's advocate right there. Number one, he had the heart procedure he had the heart incident that kind of kept him from joining the team at the beginning of the season he didn't play the whole season maybe never got his footing he was a highly touted prep star and at points he did have flashes that's not the exciting reason why teams would possibly think about drafting him after one season what is the reason Vlad that a team might possibly draft Bronny James even though he hasn't had the greatest numbers at USC after one season because you could get his daddy because Pops might be rolling on over. You can get Daddy. You could possibly get Daddy. LeBron has said that before he retires, he wants to possibly go on and play with his son, Bronny James. This could be the perfect opportunity. A lot of people say, he sucks. What, what, what in the world? Why? Well, I'm here to tell you. If you're a team that's kind of middle of the draft, late in the first round, might want to go ahead and take that chance. Because remember the other day, Vlad, we went over that Tyler Hero 2019 draft and who was before him and who was behind him, and it was a whole lot of nobody. And he was 13th. Just looking at last year's draft, the Raptors, they took Grady Dick from Kansas, who's a good player. He's okay. 14th, the Pelicans, Jordan Hawkins. Who? From Connecticut? Didn't, doesn't really do much with the Pelicans. At number 15, the Hawks took Kobe Bufkin. Kobe Bufkin. 16th last year, the Jazz, they took Keontae George of He's Baylor. Good. He's good. He's actually good. The Lakers, Jalen Hood, Shafino. Yeah, well, yeah. The Heat, Jaime Hawkins Jr. Okay. okay. The Warriors, at number 19, Brandon Podziniski. Podziniski, and he's playing very well. He leads the league in charges. Rockets, Cam Whitmore. Pretty good. Nets, Noah Clowney. Yeah, he's a clown. Nets, Derek Whitehead. Mm. Blazers, Chris Murray. Mm. Kings, Oliver Maxence Prosper. Okay. He's okay. Grizzlies, Marcus Sasser. Hmm. He's played. He's played. Pacers, Ben Shepard of Belmont. Okay, so what you're getting, what I'm getting at is... It's a hit or miss. It's a hit or miss. So... There's a chance, 50-50, maybe even better, that you'll miss. So why not go out there, draft Ronnie James, and see where the chips fall? And I'm sure you can talk to Daddy and say, hey, man, if we happen to have interest in your son, would you happen to have interest in coming to play for us? Because we know LeBron just is a year-to-year guy when it comes to his contract. It's a package deal, man. Look, why not? He's, 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 letting you know, he's, let, he's letting it be known that he would love to play with his son but he's also trying to make it like oh a year or two this that and the other you hear that he only had, he's only thinking about a year or two well it's gotta be something you guys are you still chasing rings because if you're chasing rings then you'll probably then you're gonna go to the best scenario possible if you're also chasing rings if you're a team that wants to put asses in the seats and is still trying to and is still competing then I think, yeah, you may want to consider at that 40 year old man, at the 40 year old man who's going to be in his 22nd season. And I really look at it. If there's one, there's a couple teams that this will work out for. There are a couple teams. There are a couple teams. So here's what I'm looking at. If you're thinking that you can draft them, I think you might. I think the Miami Heat would have to consider it. Looking Possibly. at LeBron, and okay, if LeBron, if Bronny doesn't get drafted, and needs another year of school, there's a program down here that 
up until this past season, went to the Elite Eight and Final Four the last two years. And they have a hell of a coach who would get the best out of Bronny because Bronny fits the the, the game that Coach Laranaga likes. He likes defenders. He loves guards. You see what he's done with guards. You see what he's done with Nigel Pack. You saw what he did. Uh, who was the year before? Uh, who left? Uh, Isaiah Wong. Isaiah Wong. Cam uh, McGusty. So I think Bronny going to the University of Miami under Coach Laranaga and Bron coming back to Miami and we and we'll play some things in the next segment that kind of makes it seem like a lot of burying of the hatchet has gone on and he's the way he talks about Spo the reverence he has for Spo is you could tell that he loves Spo and Spo still loves him I, it all depends on what if they squash the beef with him and Riles. But I really do say I really could see Mr. the James family returning back to South Florida. And why not? This is the best state to retire. Florida is the best place to retire. You've had fun here. Why not? You're going to retire again. You're, go, you're going to retire. Not again, but you're going to soon retire. Why not retire in South Florida? You could, could travel back and forth. You got you know, jets. You, you could go back way, to yeah, Miami you know and LA. The, of the land and everything like that. And I mean, okay, we've talked about this, and a lot of people have talked about this. Why would you draft draft Bronny James? Of course, number one, because LeBron James might play. Number two, though, is a lot of the financial things. Like you said, you want to put people in the seats. You want to sell merchandise. You want to have a lot of hype around your organization. If you can get Bronny and LeBron, whether it works or not, as far as wins and losses, it's a win financially. You're going to sell uniforms. You're going to have everybody go to every single game, everywhere you go. It's going to be a circus. It's going to be fun. It's going to be wild. Ronnie decides, though, or does not get drafted. He has to go the college route. Why not the University of Miami? He knows Miami. <laughs> We've got a great NIL deal. You think John Ruiz could use Ronnie James as an endorser for Life Wallet or for whatever? Yeah. You think Ronnie James could sell some stuff down here in Miami? Yeah. So it looks like more and more likely that at least maybe Bronny James coming to Miami, I, I, whether I, a hurricane or a heat member. And why not? And the other Because he's not going to be a first. I'm sorry. He's not going to be a first round pick, Kuzan. So take, we know you that. Can take a flyer on him. What, if you're you like, could, but, what teams would it work for? The Lakers. Let's say they want to keep LeBron James. If, but it makes sense for a team who's in the 20s, late 20s, who what has a chance, who's competing. The 76ers. It, that's the team, I think. What about Dallas? What about Dallas? What about Dallas? Why not? What about Dallas? Why not Dallas? Why wouldn't the Mavericks? Why wouldn't Mark Cuban draft Bronny James with the chance of having LeBron and think of that big three of Luka, LeBron, and Kyrie? And co let's go with this. A team like the Cavaliers, the nostalgia of bringing LeBron James back. One last dance. But the new generation is here, too. Oh! Why not the Knicks? Are, are you, as a Knicks fan, are you down? We got that? a crap load of, we have too many draft picks to that's ridiculous we could draft lebron jr we could bribe draft Bronny and bring lebron in it's listen i would take the package deal i don't think it's the worst deal i don't world. think it's the I worst really package don't. deal I, ever as a heat fan i'm scared of the 76ers draft Bronny james late in the first round and lebron says you know what i want to go to philadelphia that's scary so it's i'm not going to take a free agent who's either the best, the greatest, or second greatest basketball player ever, who's still at the age of 39, dropping 25, 7, and 8, yeah, he could still shooting 42% from the free throw, um, from the three-point line, and shooting 52% from the field. He's still him. Yeah. So yeah. if I add him on a team of young, ready to win right now, or even a team with vets, that is ready to win right away. now. You're, I mean, he's a big step towards a championship if you're one step away. It's like the, the ultimate Knicks, piece. Like he's the deep. Cavs. Like the Heat. Like the 76ers. Like the Heat. That's just the East in the West. The Mavericks. Right Woo! The Lakers. Woo! Well, the Lakers, we know what they are with him, kind of. But what if the Mavericks <laughs> go out there and they make a move? Man, that's a good team. Oh, man. We don't care, Sergey. You could change the you could change the station if you want. He doesn't like, like Sergey. I don't understand people like you may not like the man, but you can't you can't knock the fact that he's still him. That's the other question. Okay, let's do this. If LeBron comes back, does everybody do an about face that hates him and says, "Oh, you know, everybody likes him. It's bowing him, obviously." Bear the hatchet. Riley likes him. He's back here winning with the Heat. What happens to the haters? Do they do an about face? Because 
Recently, LeBron James was gushing, gushing, and showing love to a certain coach we all know very well. Could the James guys be coming back? The James gang. The James gang be coming back to South Florida. More evidence on a possible yes next here on Sports Day 560 WQAM. The heat.
Sunday, bloody Sunday. People want our blood. Vlad, after the comments about Bronny possibly playing with the Heat, are the Hurricanes and Bron possibly turning to Miami? 954 texts in, you two are on Quaaludes. Oh, my God. Listening to this makes me want to bomb it. LOL. He's joking. Or she's joking. Please keep LeBron and his family away from South Florida. Please keep Ronnie away from the Miami Hurricanes. I don't want him or his fraudulent father anywhere near us. Yo, get over it, man. Yeah, stop bitching. Y'all yeah, a bunch of Cody crybabies. Y'all sound like a bunch of heat crybabies right now or South Florida crybabies. Strong it's been, feelings. It's been 10 years already. Get over it. Strong Stop acting like a jilted ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend. Well, maybe this will make it better. Recently, LeBron James on a podcast talking to J.J. Reddick. I know, Vlad, you were listening to this the other day. I think it's one of the best uh, podcasts out there. If you love basketball, if you want to know, like, the the intricacies of the game and why certain calls are play, you know certain calls are called why they run certain offensive sets how to defend those sets it's been if you're a basketball geek yeah this is it this is this is this is the podcast well jj reddick asked lebron james really was a chris bosh question and how the dynamic with bosh and how things changed and how it wasn't right away and lebron james didn't so much talk chris bosh he gushed about Coach Spo. Obviously, my first year there, you know, played great basketball, got all the way to the finals, losing the finals. I played like shit. Spo is the reason why we were a better team and our team was more assembled properly. That summer, he went to Oregon and hung out with Chip Kelly. Oh, interesting. He, he when we lost to Dallas, he went to Oregon and hung out with Chip Kelly and learned to spread offense and tried to figure out if he could translate that to basketball. And don't know the super conversations that him and Chip had, but I know when he came back to us, he knew in order for us to reach our potential, one, I had to be fucking 10 times better than I was in that previous June finals. But Chris Bosh had to go to the five. And CB being who he is, there was no pushback. There was no pushback. He knew in order for us to reach our potential that CB would have to go to the five and we had to spread. We had to, he had to start working on his corner three faithfully every day after practice, corner three every day after practice. We're going to post you up. We're going to get you your elbow catches. The offense is going to run through you at times. But in order to bring, you know, the Tyson Chandlers out of the paint, in order to bring the Roy Hibberts out of the paint, in order to bring Tim Duncan out of the paint at times, in order to bring Kevin Garnett out of the paint, you got to hit these corner threes. You got to at least be a threat. And Spo, Spo knew it. he had that. He had that vision. He went and learned. He said the way I. He said the way I coached in that finals versus Dallas, unacceptable. I told myself the way I played, unacceptable. And he came back with vengeance, and I was all I, I was locked in from, from start to finish. But it was Spo. It was Spo. It was Spo. It was Spo. Is he paving the way back to Miami? Him, Bronny, the James Gang. By the way, nine five four. If you got Quaaludes, you know, let me know. Interesting though. Now, first of all, that's extremely interesting that Spo goes to Chip Kelly and learns from a football coach the spread offense. And pulls Chris Bosh out to get the big men out of lane. That's great. It's that's great stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's great also. LeBron James is basically saying, "Suppose a genius. Yep. I respect the man. I love the man." And he's had nothing but high praise for for Spo for like the last forever. But I've known that any interview where there's mention of Miami, he's always given Spo the props and love that uh, that he deserves. And it's 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 it seems like. Whatever beef them there might have been has been or whatever, you know, it's been thought out, man. Whatever the the the, the coldness has been thought out. I don't know what the situation with him and Rouse is. That's but that, that, yeah. But also you gotta figure LeBron James, Pat Riley's and Pat Riley, they're not rookies in this game. They understand sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta let bygones be bygones. But really, right there, that was LeBron James gushing and glowing and loving what Eric Spolster does as far as a coach. I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's not a crazy idea, folks. It's not. It's I, It's because 
it's either this. He's going to be drafted by a team, and he might go to the G League, whatever. But business-wise and personnel-wise, look, if you have a chance to bring that man back, I don't care what you say. He could be 40. He's still one of the top 10 players in the league. He's still, still eating people up. Still eating. Still eating. Still top 10. And if you're a team that's close, division, you got knocked down in the second round, you got knocked down in the conference finals. I mean, you, you know? Can I, can I ask you another question, Vlad? When you think about any team in the NBA, the one team you would name in the NBA that can develop players that are either late in the draft or undrafted, what team is the best, the best at developing young players who are A, either late in the draft or B, undrafted? Yeah, you, you know, it's about the heat culture. It's about the heat culture. He LeBron knows James. He's part of it. He, he Ronnie for four James. Years. Eric Spolster, who we know. LeBron James respects a lot. You heard it right there. Pat Riley, who knows how to construct a team. A team that, let's be honest, the past couple of years has been a step away. LeBron James is a big step. He's a major step. And it seems like he's all for playing for Eric Spolstra. And I'm thinking Eric Spolstra is all for coaching LeBron James again. If he's going to leave L.A., because it's really, I listen, man, it's tough to leave Los Angeles. Just I understand. To, but if, that, if there's a place you leave. But if there's a place you leave, you'll go back. It's a place that you've either been at or been to before. So you can either go back to Cleveland or go back to MIA. You ain't going to Charlotte. You're not You're going not to Charlotte. City. You're not going to Charlotte. You're not going to that. But there's other teams. Like, let's, I think, Portland. I think if you're New York, I think if you're Dallas, I think if you're Philadelphia, I Ooh. think if you're Miami, Ooh. I even think if you're Orlando, you need to consider that. If you're a team that is starting or has had playoff success or seen the playoff and you 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 think you're one of the top eight teams in the league and you want to take that next step, he's a free agent. So you're not giving up assets. Mm -mm. And if you have a draft pick and it's a late draft pick, mm -hmm. first round, late first round or early second round. Yeah. And Pat Riley, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm pointing to my wrist. That clock is ticking. What are you going to do? Sounds as illogical. Sounds logical to it's me. It's just as logical that you go ahead, take a flyer on Bronny, get him into heat culture, maybe develop him. LeBron James likes Eric Spolstra. Eric Spolstra knows how to coach LeBron James. You've been one step away. Remember, you went to the finals last year. Hmm. And like you said, no draft capital has to be used other than the Bronny James part. No. You got a free agent. And maybe even LeBron takes a little bit of a, a cut because he wants to play with his son. Why not? Wow. Now, and if you question. and if you don't think if he wants to go play, if he feels like he needs another year. University of Miami? Yeah. Maybe do maybe do the whole juniors program. You go to the University of Miami for a year, <sighs> get your feet wet in the area, get a feel for it, get to know the program a little bit better in the, in the heat. I like it. 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 Bring Bron and Bronny to Miami. Bring I like the it. James gang back. Bring the James family back the to the only South people, Florida. The now the only people you have to sell, Pat Riley, who we don't know where he stands on this. I don't think you have to sell much, bro. And the fan base that's turned their back eh, on LeBron the James. Base. Man, the fan base will be back here buying all the number six jerseys back again. You can get out of here, bro. All right? <laughs> Come on, please. You kidding me? You kidding me? I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> Welcome back. Be yeah, yeah, Miami. Bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. They hate him, and then they'll they'll be a you know what? This game, this game. There'll be another uh, there'll be another uh, party again, and he was like, oh, I can't guarantee you one or two, but I'll give you one. I'll give you one. <laughs> yeah, if he can give you one, you'll take it. It's worth he'll everything. Take it. You haven't won a title in eleven years, and trust me, take it from a guy who hasn't seen. I've listened to by my the last time my team won, I was even created. Yeah. Right. I was even a gleam in my daddy's eyes. The Knicks won. I was oh. even a thought. My my sister was. That was it. Hey, as a Pelicans fan, can we win a playoff series? Never been to the finals. Yeah, I'd like that. By the way, this would be the smartest wordplay. And we talked about wordplay yesterday. We'll talk about it in the next segment, too. LeBron gets out, uh, introduced to Miami, walks out on stage. Instead of not one, not two, he just goes, see you on Biscayne. You'll see me because it has double meaning because that's where the Caseya Center is, but it also has the mean that's where the parade's gonna be. See you on Biscayne, LeBron. See you on Biscayne. I'm just saying. 
I'm just saying. We're going to get you caught up with everything else next. I know you hate us, but we love you. Next, Sports Day 560 WQAM.
It's time for Sports Day. Turn it up. It's Sports Day with Dan Day. Of course, my cousin Vladimir Luison and I, Dan Day, love it when you text or write into us 305 567 0560, or you can go on the Odyssey app. You can jump up on Twitch. And YouTube, just type in 560 WQAM. Loud127 says, waste a draft pick for a guy who averaged four points a game in college and his old-ass dad and get rid of our draft picks like Jaime Hawkes and Nikola Jovic. Well, first of all, he's a free agent, so he might take a discount to play with his son. And you probably get a son at a pretty decent price because he's a rookie. But Loud127 says, Sounds like a good deal. Menu 631, you know we love you. He said, Brownie ain't a dog. He's a cat, maybe even a mouse. Sergey is all jumping all over the place saying he hates us because he doesn't like the idea of Brownie or LeBron playing for the Miami Heat. Fact of the matter is, if we're doing a draft on potential, Brownie James was a McDonald's All-American coming out of high school. Let's remember that now. He wasn't just some kid that was LeBron James' son. He was a high school McDonald's All-American. So. Oh, and of course, yeah, you're going to talk about the points and the stuff he did at USC. Once again, he had a major heart issue. Now, that could be an issue why you wouldn't want to draft him, but I would say he had major. He had an heart Almost issue. died. He had an heart issue. He had an heart issue. And when you say Vlad. major, that, that's not a reason Vlad. for me to draft you. Vlad. If you have a major, I'm not going to draft you. Right. I, I, I thought he was never going to play again. To be but that's what I'm saying. Don't say major because if he wants to play, that, yeah. Okay. When you say major, they, yeah. Uh, but he might came not on heart. Might not want to draft you. He came onto the, the team late. You know, and the season had already started. So. Well, and yes, and their coach left. Their right, coach there's a was, lot going on there. Yeah, and their coach left, so that's why he's in a transfer portal. But he might stay because uh, they do. But like I said, what team is the best at developing young talent? I will say this. They did hire – USC did a good job by hiring Eric Musselman. Um, oh, Eric Musselman's great. Arkansas. He's a very good coach. Yeah, he did lead Arkansas to, I, I believe, an elite eight. A couple of eight. elite eights. Yes, and he's, mar he's married to the beautiful Danielle. He does have that. Sergeant. Muscleman, if you all know who Daniel Sargent was, she was a former ESPN reporter, uh, ESPN News. Uh, she also has a <laughs> a viral moment where she might have cursed on the air uh, or during a commercial break. It happens. It happens. <laughs> but she is definitely beautiful. Her sister uh, is also part of the UFC. Uh, she hosts the UFC. Uh, I guess she does the pre-show uh, to certain UFC live events. But yeah. Eric Musselman's a great coach, led Arkansas to the Elite Eight and many uh, NCAA tournament. Um, so maybe he may stay, but he is definitely in the portal. And listen, business is smart businessmen. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why they're they're millionaires and billionaires. Okay, if you notice that anything with LeBron, with that James, did that name, that James name. It's going to sell. It it's going to sell out arenas. It's going to sell out merch. It's going to do all that. If he has a chance to do what the Griffies did, look what it did for Seattle. I bet you it helped Seattle a lot, seeing Ken Griffey Sr. and his son, who would become one of the greatest baseball players of all time. Yeah, you're going to go and want to see that. You don't get the chance to see that. That is a an event. That's going to be an event. And whether the son is good or not, whether it's uh, nepotism, yeah, hey, it happens, bro. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You may hate it because you don't have that. You don't have that. But if you had it, you wouldn't be complaining. You wouldn't be bitching. You wouldn't be saying anything. You would love the fact that you have an, uh, an advantage and take advantage of that. Yeah. Take advantage of your advantage. Smart executives, smart businessmen, smart players do smart things. And that's why they're where they're at. That's so right. yeah. let's see what happens. Um. I, you know, you never know, but yeah, I'm comparing. Yes, yeah, sir. I'm comparing Bronny to Griffey Jr. in the fact that if a father and son have a chance to play, they're gonna play. Stop being an idiot, man. Okay. Now you're getting me pissed. Well, now you're getting not like now. Nah, I don't care about you now. Bronny's got nice options now. Like, if come on, bro. <laughs> Nobody's comparing him. We're just saying that, yo, you've never seen a father and son. Like, get over it, man. Like you're you bitching about LeBron and all of that. And guess what? You would get. He's gonna be matter of fact. I want him to play for five years now. Now I want him to play five years just to piss you off. Let's cool it all down. Let's play the montage. Some of the highlights that happened just yesterday in the sports world here in South Florida and all the world with a little bit of music in the background from Pitbull. 
Inter Miami defending the goal towards the left in front of their ultras. This is where I win. Playing skills. This will sell more copy than Starbucks. In white, right to left, Boston in black, left to right. We are off and running here at TD Garden. Ding, ding, the well, he's got a man that flirted with a 400 average leading off for them. The batting champion, Luis Arise, the fly ball center field. Victor Scott, the second, says, I'll take it. A little skip and a hop, and he makes the cap. Pop of the 18, one touch shot. Oh! Straight the chuck off the cue. Messi in the corner. We're tied at one. What a ball from Negri. What a finish from Messi. And Purdue has one more step down Redemption Road. The team that lost last year to a 16 will play on Monday for a national title. Well, Purdue 63. North Carolina State 50. The inbound history. One win away from a repeat national championship. And the Cardinals win it. It's a 3 1 final score. Outstanding pitching for the Cardinals. More bad luck for the Marlins, who fall to 0 9. And Jimmy, tomorrow. The birds go for a swing. I would have taken the 2 2 draw based on the lineup that I saw prior to the game. Well, that's the final score from Chase Stadium in Fort Lauderdale. Inter Miami 2, the Colorado Rapids 2. She ripped away, Boquist along. It's down to our left. Here, circle away in a shot. He scores top shelf. Yes, for Boquist. Boston takes it 3 2 in overtime. You heard the disappointment in Doug Plagan's voice right there when Boston got the overtime winner 3 2 over the Florida Panthers. That was a playoff atmosphere, playoff type game yesterday between the Panthers and the Bruins. It was in Boston. I thought the Panthers, especially in the third, period really equipped themselves well they look very very good even though they're not quote unquote in the playoffs I feel as though they have that switch that they can make happen it was a very tightly contested game I thought maybe Boston was a little more physical in the first two periods but then the third period we were much better and as you heard the ball just uh, the ball the puck just kind of got away from the Panthers they're on the road it's a regular season game it's Boston it'll be all right but Playoff like game yesterday between those Bruins and those Panthers. And I'm okay with that overtime loss. You still get the point. You still show that you can go on the road and play like that against a really, really good team. You're okay. Panthers, great. They're fine. We've been talking a lot about the Heat's future. Let's talk about this current Heat team. They have their biggest game of the season today against the Pacers. Five o'clock right here on 560 WQAM. Mm -hmm. Indiana just a half game up on Miami for that sixth spot in the east and we have talked about it that play-in if you lose today you look more and more like you're going to be in the play-in most likely and that play-in situation is sticky and shaky you don't want that man it's just you looked at it what happens if you go up against the 76ers in the, not in the winter advance game 76ers have shown with a tired joel mb they can beat you ah it's not an easy game and joel mb is going to be a little more in shape next week because we've got no one more week and then if you lose that game, then you get either the Atlanta Hawks or the Chicago Bulls. We know that Atlanta beat us last year in a playoff game. And we barely got past the Bulls in a play-in game. So, ooh, so take care of business today. Like I said, there's four games after that. You're going to Atlanta on Tuesday. Then you get the Mavericks here. And then you get finally the two final home games, Friday and Sunday, against Toronto. Everything's set up for you. You control your own destiny to get that six. Also get that time off, which is Huge. I think we're overlooking that, Vlad. How important and how good would it be to after a long season to have that week off? Yeah, that's what you want, man. That's what every team wants. And you're not a young team, really. Uh, not You're not a young team after you've had, what, four years of long playoff runs. Well, I mean, let's forget it. 
Let's go back to the bubble. the bubble. Although you had time off between, yeah, the but bubble still, still yeah. bubble. Yeah, but look, did you really? Because you were, it was like literally six weeks. You were right back into the next season. Played a lot of games, and look what, and it cost you because you got eliminated in the first round in 2021. But then in 2022, ECF, 2023, NBA final. Um, yeah, yeah, you've been playing long games, long seasons, long, long seasons. Long seasons, long games, yeah. And the long series, too. Remember those Eastern Conference Finals past two years have been seven. Hadn't been, you know, just a, a lark, a walk in the park. Lionel Messi, he makes it look easy. 12 minutes into the game as a sub. Goal. Also got an assist. Inter-Miami, they played to a 2-2 draw against the Colorado Rapids. Can you believe this? It's the first time Inter-Miami and the Colorado Rapids have ever played each other. Inter-Miami's been around since 2020. Interesting. Young female did rush the field to take a selfie with Messi before she was escorted off by security. And, of course, Messi's personal bodyguard, who we all see in the social media pictures, is just a mountain of a man. Goodness gracious. Marlins, they have a long way to go up this mountain. They started 0-9 last night or yesterday. They fell 3-1 to to the Cardinals. They play in St. Louis in just a couple of minutes. Oh, an hour for now. 2-15. Whoo. Now... 0-9 is not the worst start. There's been a handful of teams, uh, like a dozen or so, that have started 0-10, 0-11. Only one team has ever started 0-9, 0-10, 0-11. and had a winning record. <laughs> Who was, was that? Astros. Houston Astros did it, I, I want to say in the, like 88 or something Yeesh, like that. Bro. But the worst start of all time, Baltimore Orioles, 0-21. You know what's going to happen, right? I'm going to be confident that Mar's we're gonna not going to start 0-21. Mar's going to win a game in New York. Of course, no, they might that's going to happen. They and might it, even sweep the Yankees. It's, no, they're not going to sweep the Yankees. They're not going to sweep the Yankees. They're, gonna go on record say, I think they're, they're gonna not going to sweep the Yankees. Yankees. They'll lose two out of three to the Yankees, but they're going to get their first victory over the Yankees because that's just the way it is. Max Meyer on the mound today. Who? I, Max Meyer. Yeah, okay. I got Max Meyer mania. You know that, man. Uh, yeah. First round draft pick a couple of years back, just coming off of Tommy John surgery. Pretty good. He had a decent outing last game, but nonetheless, the pitching wasn't terrible yesterday. The pitching was okay. It's just no run support. Didn't score a run until the eighth inning, Vlad. Down 3 nothing. Score mm. a run in the eighth. That's it. And, of course, the biggest game today. The biggest game today? Well, not well for the Heat, yes, for, it, for the Heat bases. But the big game today is obviously the Women's, women's National, National Championship Final. Game. 3 yes. o'clock. South Carolina. Undefeated. South Carolina looking for revenge against America's sweetheart, Caitlin Clark and, I, and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Last season, in the Final Four, Iowa, Iowa took out undefeated South Carolina. So to understand, in the the only team to beat South Carolina, South Carolina in the last two years, it's been Caitlin Clark and Iowa Hawkeyes. Maybe they have their number. So it's cool this though. is. You know, I mean, I'm gonna listen, man. I'm giving shout shout out to the women's game. I I'm re, if you read this ESPN article that I was reading right now uh, earlier. The women, the women's movement's really garnered a lot. It's gaining a lot of traction. I didn't realize that a lot of the men game, the players in the NBA players are wearing the Sabrina ones. Sabrina Ionesca, Ionescu. Ionescu, uh from the New York Liberty. Yeah, a lot of NBA players are wearing her her sneakers. Really? Yes. They, they they make them unisex or they make it's a unisex. No, well, I mean it is unisex. I mean sneakers are sneakers. You can you can wear women. No, but women's shoes but, sometimes are different than men's, aren't yeah, they? I mean you just it's just the size. It's just sizing. It's just size. Hmm. You're more of a sneakerhead than I am. I but, buy Chuck Taylor All Stars. That's all. You're I doing a lot of. If you go into a lot of people's see go to a lot of NBA players' lockers. You'll see a lot of Kobe's. You see a lot of bronze. Obviously, you see MJ, the Jordans. Jordan. But yeah, the 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 Ionescu's is or the Ionescu ones are a very popular item Ooh. and go ahead caitlin clark she's got that shoe deal coming she not it already has one i don't i don't think i don't think dawn that. staley and the south carolina gamecocks like no who's got let me tell you dawn staley yeah. or maybe you know what let me flip that maybe she, she beat prime to the punch she beat prime to them they their swagger and the way they talk and how they hold them their players accountable and the, the way they coach is 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 just alluring like it, it just it it captivates you and that's why i say right now the game right now for the women's game is probably this is the best they've ever been and i hope the nwnba is able to utilize that and help their cause because yeah bro i don't know if we're going to be talking about women basketball like this 
heavy like uh, we as we have over the last year again oh, it's a new golden age and the storyline today is also great maybe overlooked is that south carolina like you said only lost in the past two seasons ruined their undefeated season last year caitlin clark and iowa could be the ones that ruin them this year caitlin clark also on somewhat of redemption tour in iowa remember they get to the national championship game and lose to lsu and angel reese so both teams kind of on this redemption trying to prove it tour only one of them going to fulfill that so it's a very and, interesting story. and sabrina caitlin clark's wearing, is wearing the sabrina ones but why not you got to so yeah present yeah, yeah man good job man good job good job guys good um, job. let's figure out the guys on the men's side purdue did defeat nc state six and we're gonna get a good game there and uconn outlasted alabama 86 70 i can't wait to see the battle of the big men i want to see uh edney versus that that uh the, the big guy for Connecticut. UConn. Who's just UConn's been, got two big guys. Just, yeah, they've been swiping the ball. They just every time you get into the paint, swipe, brush, boop, come to the paint. You're gonna get brushed. That's what that's what UConn do, and they have a powerhouse, and they might be having a dynasty right now because they won it last year. They can win it this year. Still got Purdue winning tomorrow. And you still wow. You oh the Virginia the Virginia, the Virginia uh, you got yeah. the Virginia effect. Okay, you because they lost. When Virginia, for those that didn't know, the Virginia Cavaliers, maybe four years ago, maybe four or five years ago. Maybe seven or eight. Maybe yeah. seven. Okay. But they were in one seed that got eliminated in the first round uh, by 16. And the following year, they won the, the national, national title. So Purdue was a one seed last season that got knocked out by a 16 seed. And I guess my cousin, Dan Day here, thinks that they're going to repeat that and beat Connecticut, which would be the ultimate, you know, way of redeeming yourself. Re redemption story. If you beat the national, you, you get eliminated, come back, and you knock out the national champs, the like repeating national champs who everybody thinks is like a, a juggernaut right now. Presumptive national champion again, yeah. Yeah, juggernaut. So, yeah, we'll see. Or UConn does the double-double. <laughs> we told you. In Arizona. We told you. Where you can get it because they're in Arizona and there's a in and out is in Arizona. They can get the double-double. They, they can, can do, do the double-double. happen. Yeah. One more quick note. Odell Beckham Jr., someone did text us yesterday, he responded to Tyreek Hill's Snapchat saying that he was coming to Miami by hitting up X and saying, LOL, I'm confused today. Did I sign somewhere? Error body, keep hitting me up. So Odell Beckham Jr. is I doesn't know what Tyreek Hill is talking about. Exactly. That's why I said, great, it's wordplay. I mean, yeah, but Odell Beckham. To gonna, Miami is different. But Odell's like, And I Odell know. like, yeah, I never said I signed. Yeah, like I said, like, but maybe you you need to say you signed. You just said coming you just, to you Miami. You said you coming to Miami. Maybe you signed a home. You maybe signed a lease. You know, signed a lease to a house in Miami or a condo. I don't They're know. They're messing with us. They're both messing with Trolls. us. Trolls. They're messing with us. Trolling. I ain't messing with you right now though, Vlad. Let's quick take a step into the day spa. <laughs> the Leipzig Germany Zoo said a violent break-in occurred the other night, and a rare female macaque monkey was stolen. A macaque? You gotta you, you gotta lock up your monkey, man. You gotta lock up your macaque. They'll, they'll steal your monkey. They'll steal your monkey. Don't steal my monkey. Don't jerk my monkey. Speaking of dolphins, <laughs> let's, what's this draft for the dolphins gonna look like? We're gonna kind of take a look and see. Is it gonna be sexy? Is it gonna be unsexy? Is it gonna be meat and potatoes? What might it look like? That's next here on Sports Day 560 WQAM. <laughs>
Ah, cruising, not boozing though, cruising on a Sunday afternoon. This is Sports Day with Vladimir Lewis. I am Dan Day. Dolly Parton? No, Beyonce. Oh, how like dare this, you? I like this new Beyonce country vibe that she's got going on. Yeah, so well, she it. did take Dolly Parton's Jolene and, you know, change I, it up her way. I don't think it's too much of a stretch, though. A lot of people are like, oh, my God, she's just trying to reach a new demographic. And, and so it's so odd. So? It's like, but she's from Texas. She sounds natural. I don't I don't think this is her just going. Hey, bro, there. nobody. It's like the LeBron hate. People don't like when successful people do other things and then become successful she's following her muse people don't like when you change or you do something different either no nah, people just don't like when people like like listen, john I'm not, I'm not, listen we all have hate we all have hate in us in in our heart so if somebody's successful we don't like them even being more successful continue to be more successful i, I evolve with my artists like you, know, you evolve as a person i mean john lennon said look you don't like sergeant pepper's hearts lonely hearts club band that's too bad. I'm not going to sit there and make the same album that I made when I was 18 years old. I'm making new albums, new types of music. I'm a different guy now. Beyonce has the right to evolve. She doesn't have to play single ladies every single album. She can do other things. And I don't think it's that much of a stretch. I like the songs a lot. I think it sounds good. She's from deep in the heart of Texas. Doesn't sound contrived. Doesn't sound like she has a lot of effort. I like, I, I mean... I like it. That's all I, I don't know. I don't know how deep I can get into it. Nah, I mean, yeah. Other than I like it, I don't think it's a reach. It's uh, not. And if you don't like it, guess what? Like every other artist, you have the right not to listen to it. Well, they force it down my throat. Nobody's, nobody's forcing, forcing it down your throat, bro. You have that's that what now. I think. That's why I'm sick of people. You don't nobody's forced things down your throat. You have a chance. If you don't like something, all you got to do is just turn it off or you know. Grin and bear it for three and a half minutes. Not even grin and bear. You don't even have to. Just turn it off. There's other stations. There's a, you know. There's other apps. You don't gotta listen to the music. I know. I same know. way you don't gotta watch LeBron. You you know, there's other things to do. Yeah. If you don't like a player, if you don't like a team, if you don't want to watch a team, listen to a team, don't listen, don't watch. I'm not gonna be listen. I can't make you I can't force you. All right. Well, what the only game on Saturday night is the Lakers. What am I supposed to do? You don't have to watch a basketball game. But I want to watch basketball, man. It's, and those shut are the up. same, those are the same people that when the Lakers come to town, I gotta get tickets to that game. I gotta go. I just, I know, just you know, I'm I off gotta of work. Buy, yeah, I'm off of work that day. I gotta go. Okay, okay. Hey, look, whatever. Oh yeah, I'm going to cheer against. Okay, that's fine. Once again, you're going to that game. I don't know. Let's talk about the Dolphins real quick. We haven't gotten into their quote unquote draft. Pro Football Focus, good people over there, recently put together a list of the biggest needs that the Dolphins have after free agency, which kind of leads you into thinking, what's this draft going to look like? They mentioned interior offensive line. The middle of the offensive line was anchored by stellar play Connor Williams and Robert Hunt in 2023. Both are gone. Now they've gotten Aaron Brewer. And they've re-signed Isaiah Wynn, and they've also re-signed Kendall Lamb to kind of shore things up. You're hoping Lee and Eichenberg could be in there. But a lot of people saying this interior offensive line needs help, meaning that you might get an unsexy pick with that 21st pick in the upcoming draft. Okay. They also say we need tight end. Well, we got Jonu Smith. Is Jonu Smith enough, in your opinion, Vlad, to kind of shore up that whole tight end situation, which Derby Smythe did an okay job last year, in my opinion. He's good. He's the best tight end I think you've had in your uh since mike mcdaniel has been the, the 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 head coach no disrespect no disrespect to smythe but it's just that he just i mean he's not a, he there he's mid he's mid you know what i mean he's mid and john who is a maybe a little bit better than mid he's gonna for that offense you need somebody who can go over the middle and just give tyreek and waddle just someone else just a, a release a relief so that they're not double team all the time and that not all the eyes are on them with the running game that you guys have right or the running and, game we're quote unquote have well the running game hopefully you know i mean it was top five it's I hope it, it continues being top five it's just hopefully it's utilized a little bit more towards right. the end Every of the year. year we hear the same thing from mike mcdaniel around this time we're going to be dedicated. We're not getting away from the running game. And every year, we, it does a, not a 180, but every year, it's like, well, well, well I thought you were going to use the running game more. But I, I John, who's good? He's good. Yeah. And this is the He's thing. Good. Mike McDaniel ran Mike Kosicki out of town because he wasn't a good enough blocker. Now we got guys that are pretty good blockers in uh, uh, Durham Smythe and Julian Hill. 
And now you got Janu Smith, who this is what Pro Football Focus says. He's a dependable blocker and an underrated receiver who excels in yards after catch, ranking third in 2023 at 7.1. That was better than both Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. So Janu Smith, to me, is a good answer. I don't know if you need to go into the draft and try to reach for a tight end right now. And then their last. No, no, no. But I'm talking about the second or third round. No, because that's one play. If he was on the Miami Dolphins, uh, Brock Bowers somehow fell all the way. There's down no there. way. But there's no way he's, he's falling down. You would have six, to move up seven, to get him. No, no, he's going to be a top 10. Maybe the, 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 the furthest I see that he'll be drafted. Like Maybe he's like 14? 15, 14 yeah, or 15. There's no way. There's no way. But. If that mofo was on your squad, good God almighty, that offense would be McDaniel, – McDaniel wouldn't even know what to do with himself. Yeah, He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He would give you 20-minute answers because he wouldn't know what to do with himself with uh, with Brock Bowers on that team. But it's not going to happen. But that's why I think John New Smith is a – I think he's he's, a, he's a good addition. He's something that you haven't had. He gives you something – like he's, he's a tight end that can move. So hopefully he stays healthy. And he's a decent blocker from what Pro Football Focus is saying. I don't watch a lot of blocking, Vlad. I'm sorry. I don't go home at night, open up a can of maple yeah. bacon coffee poured from Funky Buddha and say, ooh, let me replay the game and watch blocking. We should. Because you're not going to win without an old lineman. No, I, like Sergey said, if they the use Sergey said, if they use all their picks on linemen, he, he'll be fine. And I think a lot of teams, I think a lot of fans would be upset. Would we be not upset? Would be fine be if fine. their teams Drafted nothing but linemen because yeah. we saw what happened last year when your O line gets just ravaged with injuries. It does something to the team. It hurts your team. Your offense looks bad. Your quarterback has no time to throw. Your running game looks pathetic. Yeah, just take it from a guy who's yeah four plays into a season. It was over, yep. and we had. You and I give that's why I got to give the Dolphins credit. The Jets and the Dolphins utilized the most, um, starting, yeah, different starting. Uh, it was a revolving linemen. door of linemen, for right? Both teams, it was, it was ridiculous. But guess what? One team was able to still hold it together, hold it together. Well, you also had a better quarterback in the Dolphins than. Whoever you were rolling out there for the Jets. Well, yeah, after four plays, yeah. But what I'm saying is, yeah. but the old linemen, they still held it together. Mm -hmm. and, you lost, and you lost a couple guys. So you need to definitely replenish that. And the, the, the more depth on the line, offensive line, the better. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. The final need from Pro Football Focus, they were saying, is cornerback. Of course, you lose Xavier Howard, but you still got one of the best in the game, Jalen Ramsey. Another, they signed Kendall Fuller. A lot of people are very excited about Kendall Fuller making it onto the team. You still have Nick Needham, Cater Kahu, slot corner. Yeah. What you need, though, and I've been saying it since last year, I thought he looked good in preseason. Cam Smith. Cam Smith. It's time to, it's time to you know, what is sink or swim, as we say, Vlad. Throw him into the pool. Sink or swim. Because he looked like he kind of had an idea what was going on, at least in the preseason. I understand it's preseason, but he was in the right spots, right locations. Seemed like he had it all good. Now, we don't know. He and Vic Fangio probably didn't get along. He was in Vic Fangio's doghouse. Was he rightfully in Vic Fangio's doghouse, or was he wrongfully in Vic Fangio's doghouse? I think this is the year you're going to find out. I'm willing, okay? As a Dolphins fan, it's scary. The unknown is scary. I'm willing to throw him out there on the, in the deep end, <laughs> And say, here we go. Let's rock and roll. Cam Smith, you're a second-round pick. You're a second-round pick. You're not Noah Igbenogany. Get that out your mind. Please don't be Noah Igbenogany. You're a second-round pick. Prove it to us. Oh, man. Sink or swim. A lot of people now have their mock drafts out, and it's probably going to be, most likely, as you say, a lot of Dolphins fans not upset, an unsexy draft. There's some people like Pete Prisco of CBS Sports saying, Amarius Mims, offensive tackle from Georgia. Okay. Okay. Other guys are saying Troy Fatenu. Uh, Fatenu. He's a guard from Washington. A lot of people, including Ryan Wilson of CBS Sports, a lot of people talking about the center out of Oregon, Jackson Powers, Powers Johnson. Uh, jo is it Johnson. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah he does not look like a Jackson Powers Johnson, nah. too, by the way. Have no. you seen him? No. <laughs> you don't know what he looks like? No, he doesn't look like a doesn't Jackson. No, he doesn't look like <laughs> you, when you hear Jackson Powers Johnson. No, he doesn't look like a brother. You think he's a brother. He's not a brother. Burly white dude. 
Yeah. Play for Oregon. Yeah. Um, you got some other. Well, he's spelled different. If it's J X, if it's J A X, oh, then you know he's a, yeah, he, he's an intangible. Another offensive lineman from Penn State, Chop Robinson. Chop. I like that name. And then uh, there is somebody, uh, Sporting News, Vinny Lyre, Iyer, says Byron Murphy, a defensive tackle from Texas. Not a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of sexy names up there. There's a few people. Are you guys, uh, are they, Dolphins might have to look for an edge rusher? We've been trying to do that all offseason, get more and more edge rushers. He might want to look at Tier that. Tart. We got Tier Tart now. Okay. <laughs> Did you know there is that a we're gonna uh, play this later I, on, Vlad? I real name or not real name? We're gonna do it I with the. <laughs> I don't think I don't. I'm not co-signing anybody who's got tart in their name. <laughs> Tier, Tier Tart. You're a tart. There's some people saying maybe late in the sixth round might want to get get a local guy, Zion Nelson, offensive tackle of Miami. But there's not a lot of sexy projections. But maybe that's just what the Dolphins need because remember, that was the knock against the Dolphins. Too sexy, too finesse. Dare I say it, Vlad? I'm going to say it. Too soft. Maybe you need to get some unsexy, rugged, nasty people on this team. I don't want to say certain words like, you know. Dog? No, no, not like a dog and stuff like that. I don't want to use those catchphrases. But maybe you need <laughs> some rough and tough and tumble guys. Maybe the Dolphins have realized, yeah, we're a little too finesse. finesse. We're a little too finesse. We're a little too cutesy. We're a little too relying on, uh, you know, the Niners finer is the thing. parts Dolphins, of the game. I think, I mean, because he would coach there. McDaniel probably wants to make the Dolphins like the the version, like the East Coast version of the 49ers. Uh, who wouldn't? Because the San Francisco, it's, it's crazy. If you look, go back in their history and because of, you know, the city, whatever, you would think San Francisco's finesse, but they're not. They probably the they're the only team I really think, other than Kansas City, that they can play in any type of weather. They could play any type of game. You want to shoot out? We could we could have a shootout. You want to play rugged, thug, uh, low scoring game? We can do that. And if Shanahan and would I just think get that, over himself and get a quarterback, they would win a Super Bowl. And you think maybe Mike McDaniel might have to get over himself with some of the play calling and run the ball a little bit more, and maybe they would have they may advance. So the apple doesn't fall far the from the apple tree. Apple never falls far from Dude, the tree. Kyle Shanahan, someone needs to pull him aside and said, "Stop this madness. You, you only, have the best team in the NFL." I tell and you, got Mister Irrelevant as your I quarterback. I always feel like, and I, I maybe this is not true, but I I feel like they all play Madden, and they, that's all they. That's why they they make the calls that they do. But you got to do you got. Do what Sean McVay does. Sean McVay does not let his ego get in the way of what his team needs. Okay? He doesn't. And that's why he's the one with a ring. Mm -hmm. And Shanahan and not, you know, McDaniel just started, but Shanahan and the others don't have a ring. But I thought they all fall under that tree. They're all under that Shanahan tree. Last year at this time, Vlad, I said, watch out for the San Francisco 49ers. They're going to get to the Super Bowl and they're going to lose. And you said, I agree because Shanahan wants to be the main show. I've been said that for years. We predicted it that far out. If it's that easy to predict. Mike Shanahan, like, Shanahan's a great coach. Top three. And I was like, the Eagles are a good team. They were a good team for the but, first 11 games. But I said, doesn't matter. 49ers, they're that team that's going to get to the Super Bowl, be everybody's darling, and lose because they don't have that guy. The, that next step. They don't have that LeBron James that the they, Heat will finally eventually get. They don't have that guy. Even though he was almost, he almost led them there. But oh, there was a throw. He'll get you to overtime. Just the same way Jimmy G didn't make that throw to Emmanuel Sanders in the, on that third down late in the fourth quarter in Super Bowl live is the same way that they had a chance. He missed. Debo Samuel in in the end zone. When you go, when you that's go, the reason. That's the difference between you losing a Super Bowl and being a no, you know, champion, the defending but champion. Go, going into Kansas City overtime, Chiefs who did you have confidence in? Going into KC. overtime, you had Patrick Mahomes because they got one five. You got Patrick Mahomes. You got and fifteen. Was, you well, good? Patrick Mahomes against anybody? Yeah. Nonetheless, I mean, come on. Mm. Now we're getting sidetracked though, but Dolphins, maybe they've realized we are too finesse. We are too much of a system. Maybe we need to be more rough and tough. Maybe they go mean guys in the draft. And you know what? I don't think that's the worst thing they could do. You need guys, man. You Let's need a guy. Nasty. You need guys that's going to be able to play in December and January in the cool weather. Let's get nasty. 
That, that should be our draft slogan. Let's Miami Dolphins, 2024 20, NFL draft. Let's get nasty. Well, if you're going to get nasty, why are you letting Christian Wilkins go? Ain't nobody nastier than him. <laughs> yeah, that nasty paycheck was a problem. Mm-hmm. Nasty b- above the, the cap. That was another problem. Hey, man, CTC, baby. You got to cut that check. Cut that check. Oh, we're going to do some day and nay next. Yeah, you know, nay is a little thumbs down from what we've heard. A day is a thumbs up. Some very interesting stuff in the world, and you're going to hear it on Sports Day 560 WQAM.
Odyssey app. Download it today and make us your favorite station. Same great shows, same great games. Plus, you can use the rewind feature and listen to anything you missed. Hurry! It is a Sunday sports day, 560 WQAM. Dan Day with my cousin Vladimir Nulasov. We're doing a little something called Nay or Day right now. Nay is a thumbs down. Day is a thumbs up. Vlad, I'm going to say nay right now. I just got that text. You know my favorite thing to do after a great Sunday show that we have? When I'm being facetious, you know what I'm about to tell you, what I just got the text for to do right after this show ends. It's a big-time nay. Oh, man. It's just- your girl made you go get some food? No, not just food. Even better. Oh, no, what? Whole Foods, baby. Oh. Whole Foods. Nasty work, bro. North Miami Beach. I'm coming for you. Nasty work. What? 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 what, 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 what. And that, that's all I get from people at North. Nasty the one in work. South Beach is awesome. People Nasty. are great. I feel for you. Pick up groceries. After, I would say after a long day at work, but <laughs> we're having fun. Let's talk and do some nay or day right now. Last night. One of the biggest sporting events in the world took place. Night one, baby. In Philadelphia. Saturday. WrestleMania Extra Large, also known as WrestleMania 40. (laughs) No surprise. (laughs) We knew that Roman Reigns and The Rock were going to win. That's right, baby. A no-holds-barred match tonight between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. It was great. But. Great main event. There were surprise guests last night at WrestleMania. I think I got you. That's who I thought. Greatest center of all time, Jason Chelsea of the world champion Philadelphia Eagles and Lane Johnson. All right. First of all, Pat McAfee, I think the excitement got too much over you. Former world champion. He's not the world champion now. He was a world champion, but he's not. That is goes to the Kansas City Chiefs. Um. Second of all, they were the biggest luchadors I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, they uh, came out masked. And they, they were also the most, pa- they were the paciest luchadors I've yeah, ever seen in my life. Sun, man. Even I get some sun. No, yeah. Um, good night one. Yeah, good night oh, one. Oh, that's the real what nay or day I want from you. Like, it was a good so night one. Jason Kelsey. And no, Lane it was Johnson. a good night one. So it's a day. It's a day. Uh, it wasn't great. It wasn't the greatest. Uh, it was a one match that didn't live up to what I wanted. I think that last night was the appetizer, really. No, but and it was a good appetizer because yeah, uh, no, great no, no, it was a great appetizer. It started off good uh, with a good match the, between the ladies. Rhea Ripley defeated uh, Becky Lynch and uh, great tag team match. Happy my man uh, uh, Our truth finally got uh, his moment in the sun. He's got a win with The Miz. They're, they're the uh, Raw Tag Team Champs. And I do want to say shout out to Sami Zayn. He snapped the longest intercontinental, intercontinental title reign of Gunther. That was a great match. Probably the best match of the night. And the main event, listen, the main event to me, you know what? I, let me tell you what, the Cousin, you're going to love this. No, I, I hope mean, I will. Yeah, you're going to love this. I'm going to describe you the main event. You know what the main event was? It was predictable. No, it wasn't predictable. It was predictable, but it wasn't predictable. The outcome was predictable. You, oh, uh, Yeah. It had to. Oh, maybe it had to. No, because here's the thing. Tonight. Here's the thing. Now, everybody with everything that happened with the bloodline rules, you're thinking now Cody's gonna win because it's like the the, the right. odds are against him. Like he's back. His back to the wall. The, the, the betting favorite would be Cody's gonna win tonight because, because all the were, odds are against him. He's going right. right. It's he's going. Everything. And you know Roman Reigns has had the title for so long. And they, nah, I hope no they don't. Nah, WWE I hope they don't. Nah, I hope, I hope they keep the title. That's my reasoning it. behind it. That's but my reason. They could totally swerve. That's why I hope they do swerve and, and don't. I, I wouldn't put it past the WWE to totally and I swerve. I would love it. I would love it okay. if they keep the title on Roman. Yes, let me describe that main event. The main event was like taking a a chocolate, a special type of chocolate. We'll talk about this off the air. No, no, no. It is because. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it sometimes it, it takes forever to kick in, but when it gets when it kicks in, when it does, oh, work. you're on a ride. Yeah, it's it a was, wild ride too. It bro. was that's what it was. It was. It took 20 minutes for them to come into the ring with the entrances. Yeah, they're, they're good at their entrances. You're like, well, if it takes 20 minutes, the entrance. Oh, this is gonna be a short match. No, the match was 45 minutes. It was a 45 minute match. So from the entrance to the final, uh, one, two, three. It was like an hour and 15 minutes of, of a main event, and it was good. The Rock took bumps, 
and we're not talking about you know cocaine bumps we're talking about wrestling bumps and you would think it would a man who has a movie next month uh that he's filming i, I believe is uh 824 i think is the name of it okay uh he, he was taking bumps bro he was taking he was taking hits he was doing he was he was wrestling the rock was a wrestler and he he took her over a rock bottom from one from the Spanish announce table to the American announce table. Shout out to the Spanish announce table because in the raw era, during the attitude era, you always automatically knew once they went outside, started wiping up all <laughs> the tables. They're wrecking the Spanish and even if, table. Even if they wiped out the American announce table, you just knew the Spanish announce table is the one that was going to get the uh get destroyed run to the blows yeah no they flipped it the, the other way they they wiped out the spanish announce table like ah oh, man uh for for spanish announce table is gonna get destroyed no they wiped it out so that the american announce table could get wiped out great great so, so tonight wrestlemania sunday night two we will see if cody finishes the story we're probably gonna see a special appearances by probably stone cold steve austin, steve mm-hmm. austin and John Cena, but don't know if that's to thwart the bloodline or if it's and to help Cody. So we'll see. But uh good start so far. It should be a good one tonight, also. Mario Cristobal. Mario. He talked after practice the other day about the standard being created by the new you. A lot of guys starting to understand a little bit better what the standard is. Yeah. Holding each other more accountable, very competitive. In most areas, is that a day or a nay, Vlad? That's a nay, bro, because it's been mediocre. So if that's the standard, I need it. I need better, Mario. This is my agreement with you on nay. Is he said almost the exact same thing last year? Guys, <laughs> fucking learn what our standard is. They're really they're like, no, you know what? Now it's time to stop saying that. Yeah, well, Go out there and do it. Well, we have. What did I tell you, man? Everything in sports is two years. You got two years to show us something, and in two years, if you don't show me something, I don't want to hear it. Because now it's basically you're talk, you're saying the same thing over and over, and nothing's changed so i hope so i hope so that the standard is better than what we've seen over the past two seasons it's gonna change this i is, hope so is, i'm telling you I what's hope. going on they're building they're building yeah. they're almost there i hope i want right. to see it i don't want to hear it i got two more pieces of audio to get to but we don't have time so no I, let's, let's go let's, let's do hold it. on to it let's, we'll, we'll let's, do it let's start the next hour with it because no we'll I, do it it's stuff i really want to get into though it's stuff i really 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 two really really important things to get into there may be some hater aid being drank out there and also fans acting a fool is it good is it bad We'll start the next hour with that here at Sports Day 560 WQAM.
time for Sports Day. Turn it up. It's Sports Day with Dan Day. The Heat have unfinished business today against the Pacers, battling for that sixth spot in the East, meaning you would not have to play in a playing game if you do capture that sixth spot. Pre-game, we're taking you all the way up to it at 3.45 for Alejandro Solana. Tommy Tiger also going to have the pre-game. 5 o'clock tip, Jason Jackson on the call. And then post-game with Tommy Tiger and Alejandro Solana. But Vlad, you and I, we have some unfinished business from the last segment. Two things I want to get to that I think are very important that I think you and I both really, really have opinions on. Some audio. Of course, America's sweetheart, the talk of the town, the person everyone seems to be cheering for and loving and Wanting to succeed is Caitlin Clark. She's back in the national championship game in about an hour from now against South Carolina, Iowa, South Carolina, Caitlin Clark, a date with destiny, possibly, or Dawn Staley and the South Carolina team. I'm not going to say their team mascot because it just doesn't make mm-hmm. sense. Right. I got to I got to give a, I got to give credit to uh, Miami's most hated uh, sports columnist. Oh, goodness. Uh, Bill Simmons. Okay. Okay. Uh, because Miami hates him, but uh, he did say that you know that the women's game has gotten uh, it's reached its point when there's five people on a pregame show, like there yeah. is, right <laughs> there's five, like they got five people got on a the panel, panel. There. but you got a panel more than two, yeah, you've reached it, yeah, you've you've you reach NBA NFL levels now. Nice. So yeah. you have undefeated South yeah. Carolina Gamecocks 37 versus Caitlin Clark back in the national championship, averaging 31.7 points per game. College basketball is all-time leading score, by the way, more than Pistol Pete Maravich. I'm not getting into that argument. But was Pete even playing at a three-point? There was, even there was no, there was no <laughs> three-point line. And, you weren't, <laughs> and, he was hitting- and you weren't eligible to play your freshman year, so he only did three years, too. Oh, really? Yeah. And the shots that he was hitting were deep. <laughs> that were... Should have been threes. We're called two. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And he won his senior. I think he averaged 44.7 points per game with no three point line. <laughs> no, the teams were okay. They weren't very good, but nonetheless, playing at the old Cow Palace at LSU. And you know why I was called the Cow Palace? Because literally underneath the basketball court was a rodeo dirt. Like they, they brought cows and showed cattle. Nonetheless, that's not the point. Caitlin Clark, she's the best show on earth right now, at least in this moment playing today at three o'clock. But lately, some of the old pros like Diana Taurasi have been saying, pump the brakes a little bit on, I'm not going to say old Caitlin Clark, but Caitlin Clark. Reality is coming. Okay. <laughs> you know, there's, there's levels to this thing. And that's just life. We all went through it. Of course. Um, and you see it on the NBA side. It, and you're going to see it on this side where you look superhuman playing against 18 year olds, but you're going to come with some grown women that have been playing professional basketball for a long time. Not saying that it's not going to translate because when you're great at what you do, you're just going to get better. But there is going to be a transition period where you're going to have to give yourself some grace as a rookie. You know, it might take a little bit longer for some people. I don't know, Vlad. I hear two Big things. facts. I, I hear, hear two facts. Things. Two I hear things. facts. I hear facts. I hear truth. I hear wisdom. I hear knowledge. I also hear a little hate in her voice. Uh, a little bit of Not hate. A, I mean, maybe, but I do hear facts. Well, these, these but are, uh, you know what? Competitors. But they're no, but like she's guys. right. But no, what she's letting her know. Now, people might be looking at what Diana said as hate, but I think she's giving um, Caitlin a, you know, some, some knowledge, some jewels for her to like, hey, listen, ma. You, everything you're doing is great, but you understand when you get drafted, you're going to have a lot of people who are going to be, yeah, they're probably going to not like you. Not They're going to be some sort of hate, as the kids would like to say, because of all the notoriety and fame that you receive. And they want to make sure that they want to see if it's for real, because what they're letting you know, Diana could talk because she She's went through it. it. She's done it. Sabrina, that we just mentioned uh, uh, um, earlier. Hey, she went through it. Well, let's do this. They all one. go through it. Well, Angel's every, gonna go through it as well. Every athlete you talk to, they say, Man, I thought the jump from high school to college was unbelievable. I had no idea the jump you have to make from college to the pros. Remember, the pros are the quote unquote freak athletes of college. Like every once in a while, you might go up against someone that's awesome. Those are the guys and girls that are in the pros, the, the best of the best, the quality. I think a little bit 
She's a competitor. Diana Taurasi is a competitor. She has that competitive fire still. You ain't better than me. You ain't greater than me. But at the same time, check yourself. But also, I'm letting you know. I'm trying to help you out. Don't come in here thinking it's going to be a walk in the park like it is in college. You need to be ready to have some growing pains in this league. So in a way, I feel as though she's mentoring her. In another way, she's kind of humbling her. In another way, I think Diana Taurasi wants to lace them up and go at it a little bit. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with all three of those things right there. But I still think Caitlin Clark's going to be a great pro because she's got these certain types of skills that just translate over. When you can hit shots from half court, fade away, step back threes like she does on a consistent basis, that is something that is hard to stop at any level, Vlad. Any level. Oh, it is. But once again, you're playing against people who aren't just going to school, doing their NIL and playing basketball. You're doing people their life is basketball. I remember talking to Anthony Davis when he first signed with the New Orleans Pelicans. And we did we were doing interviews and I was like, you know, of course, someone asked, what's the big difference? He's like, man, you don't get the idea when you're in college, but these guys in the pros, that's their life. Every day of their life is dedicated to basketball. You don't have to they don't have to I don't have to worry about anything else. All they worry about is basketball. There are no ancillary things. That's a big that's a big adjustment that you have to make. And oh yeah, by the guy that's trying to make a living and saying, oh, I'm the stopper on this team. They sit there all year round watching tape on how they're going to stop the best player on the other team, on every single team. You don't sneak up on anybody, Vlad. You don't sneak up on anybody. So Caitlin Clark, there's going to be a learning curve. Diana Taurasi just saying, hey, look, be ready. Be ready. But still, I think Diana Taurasi wants to lace them up. She still does. I know, but you know what I'm saying? I love She's ready to lace them up and go after her, man. But she was just letting them know that, yeah, they're going to they're gonna come for you and be ready. Be ready. Okay. Last but not least, last night, Inner miami Lionel Messi returns. Fans were super stoked. Maybe a little too excited. Our dude, dude, Thomas Rundgren. Towards the end of the game, some fans started coming on the field. And is it concerning? Is it okay? It was interesting. I'll say that. Pretty amazing. <laughs> You got some brave people that want to take pictures with Boba. I met with Leo Messi. Actually, the first one was a very young girl that was brave enough. I'm going to whistle from Uncle. This one will not be continued. So the game, actually, that's how they ended it. Some fans tried to run on, and the first fan that tried to run on was a young girl. Looked like she was 12 years old. Runs onto the field, takes a selfie with Messi. Security and Messi's bodyguard remove her. It looks cute on TV. Tata Martino looked absolutely, I don't even know what the word would be. Uh, Pissed? Fear, fear, no, fearful and like confused. Frightened? Frightened, scared. And you know what, Vlad? It's cute and it's funny and it's a 12-year-old girl. And Messi kind of looked like a, I wouldn't say a deer in the headlights, but bewildered, kind of like, wait, what just happened? He wasn't nice, but he wasn't mean. But there is no place for that. I don't care if you're a cute 12-year-old boy, girl, little kid. I don't care if you're anything. There is no room ever to go into a professional's space and do that. And I say professional because it's not just soccer, football, basketball, baseball, tennis. It's comedians. It's actors and actresses. It's theater. No room for that. And that girl, first of all, her parents, kudos to them, by the way. Very bad job by them. Second of all, they should prosecute her. I know it's mean, it's nasty. If you let one through, you got to let others through. There is no room for that because it only opens the door. As I watched it, at first I was like, that's kind of cute. And then I started being like, that's not, that's not all right. That's very scary. Tata Martino looks scared and upset. And I think rightfully so, Vlad. I, I don't care that she was a 12-year-old girl that wanted an innocent selfie with Lionel Messi. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think, uh, well, now I understand why the comedians want to take the cameras or uh, put the cameras in a pouch because obviously you don't want, I mean, for them, they don't want their content to right. be put out there. But, I mean, she just did it just to take a selfie. Like, really? It wasn't like, you. oh, my God. It was just basically I want to do it to get a selfie. So, yeah, all right, cool. Arrest and her. And she, then people can be like, oh, no. Why well, for love? I don't care, man. I don't matter. care. It's ridiculous now. And I'll tell you, security was not the softest honor. They they got after her a little bit, and that's what their job is. And they're like, well, why are they being so rough with the little girl? Why is that little girl on the pitch? Like, no, no. Did we not see what happened to Monica Sellis? Yes. 
And like, and, and I say this, this is an extreme case. Now let's go through a couple things right there. The little girl gets the picture. I'm guessing they confiscated her phone and they're not going to let her post the picture on social media, but let's say she did post it and it gets a billion hits and everybody thinks it's hilarious and awesome. You don't think that's in the next city that Lionel Messi or someone that just wants a bunch of likes and to go viral, isn't going to go run out there and do it. And if you think you don't prosecute her, the next person that goes out there says, well, you didn't prosecute her. You set the precedent. And now a guy goes streaking across the field for some idiotic reason to sell his website or whatnot. He said, well, why should it be different for a 12-year-old girl? No, God, it is a slippery slope. If I were Lionel Messi, I, like I said, I think he really got caught off guard. As you look at it, he was like, whoa, whoa what just happened? Man? What are you supposed to do? There's a little girl running on the field. If I'm him, I wouldn't have been apologetic. And then you wonder why he doesn't play. Yeah. And then, and then fans are like, oh, he's got no heart. Well, because he wants people run, and then other people, and of course, that led to other people trying to run on the field and take a picture with him or shake his hand. Like, no, there's a time and a place. And if you open it up for one, you open it up for everyone. And like I said, extreme case right here, Vlad, what does it take for maybe some weirdo wacko to put a gun on a kid or to put an explosive device on a kid and send them out there? What, what if that happens? Oh, it's just an innocent little kid. Yo, people are sick, man. People are nuts. There's a time and a place for that. You want to take a picture with Lionel Messi, you find the appropriate place, whether it's an autograph signing, whether it's him eating at Prima Pasta in my neighborhood, something like that. You do not run on the field. It's not cute. It's not funny. It's downright dangerous. And it's leading to more dangerous behavior. And I know you're saying, I'm going nuts over a little girl running onto the field just trying to take an innocent. No, 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 no. And not you. I'm saying as a listener, probably there's people. No, after listeners too, because it's real. To, like That's no. Monica Sellis. Yes, that's what I'm saying. All, oh, oh, no, you're you overreacting. For All those it that takes don't know is about one. Monica Sellis' situation. Too. Yeah. It wasn't, no, and it wasn't a little girl. It was a, a, a fan, but it was a grown man, an older man who was a fan, but he went and stabbed the, 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 the tennis star and she was never the same after that yeah she was her on top career, of the world she was the best tennis player Unbeatable. like one of the best like there was no doubt about it she was one of the best and then what happened let's talk about this selena yeah, uh, yeah. let's talk about dimebag daryl from pantera yeah. they got killed because someone went on stage in a public place and did that. And where was the bodyguard? There was no bodyguard for Monica Sellers or anything like that. Because you're not expecting. You're thinking in on the court or on, on the pitch. You're safe. You should be safe. There's security guards that are watching that are that are paid to be looking for crazies like that. And I don't care if she's 12 or 13. She's a kook. Yeah, that's it. You're and not supposed to go on. Listen, don't go. I don't. Don't we appreciate the love. You appreciate the love. You pre you appreciate the admiration that somebody has. But yo, even for myself, listen. <laughs> We're local radio people, right? Even rate right. ra like even, but you don't run up. You're not gonna run up on Channing, are you? No. You shouldn't. You're not gonna run up on Leroy. Don't run up on on Tobin. Don't run up on Hockman. Why? Be we appreciate. They appreciate the admiration. People appreciate that you like them. But don't scare the person that you like. There's a time and a place. There's a time and a place. And they'll be like, oh, nah, bro, nah. Like, that's craziness. That is absolute craziness. And I and I know I'm no, no local people, low radio hosts are not like athlete, but it happens to everyone. We appreciate. It's appreciation is good, but don't go crazy, bro. And that's the thing. Let, I'm not saying a young girl, but let's just say a young man or a guy or whatever goes out there and runs up on somebody and gets knocked out. Sergey, so at least you guys don't have to worry about anyone wanting a pick or autograph from yeah. you guys. No, for us. It, it, I, for us. actually, it happens. It actually happens. Uh, for me, it yeah, it actually happens. Like people watch. running up on you, like, oh, like you don't. Hey, man, I appreciate people appreciate the fans. We love the fact Absolutely. that you spend the money and you you admire your your athletes, but like, come on, man, taking a picture and then now what's about now what's supposed to happen? Now what? Now you put the security people on a, on now you put them on a bad situation here. And if anyone comes out, and I'm sure there's been someone, his bodyguard and that security was too rough with that little girl. Don't put the blame on her. It's not her fault that her parents either let her or didn't keep an eye on her enough that she was running down the field getting a selfie. 
What is security supposed to do? Kindly ask her to leave? No, they react the way they're trained to react. Rightfully so. Nah, you don't want to do it. I would arrest. Yeah. You know what? Don't arrest the kid. Arrest the parents. Do them both. Arrest everybody. Arrest the parents. Arrest everybody. And then, woo, woo, woo. no, it's stupid, bro. Arrest everybody. Stupid. Maybe then they'll learn. What if Liam Nail Messi would have gotten hurt? But yeah, what, what makes him want to play now? Like, oh, yeah, I can't wait. Hmm, that's crazy. <laughs> Sergey says when, when anybody runs up on you, they give you the finger. That, you know, that, that that's acceptable. You know, I get that sometimes. Let's get to some quick headlines. The Heat and the Pacers today, 5 o'clock. As we talked about this one, the winner will have sole position of sixth place with the Heat only having four games left in the season, regular season. Panthers came back in the third period with a goal. Wasn't enough, though, as Jesper Boquist got an overtime goal, giving the Boston Bruins a 3-2 win. Next up, the Ottawa Senators Tuesday at 7. That Inter-Miami game was a 2-2 draw against the Colorado Rapids. Next up, Monterey in Mexico. Messi, the coach for Monterey, warned Tata Martino and Messi that he better play when they come to Mexico. <laughs> I like how the coach for Monterey is pulling one for the fans. Like, you better play! <laughs> there, was, there, there was an altercation after the Monterey game here. Yeah, but at the, yeah, towards the end. Yeah, yeah. okay, fine. Let him play. Look and he up. scores four goals on you and your dumb ass loses. What you going to say then? Good. Yeah. I, I love beating up on the Mexican teams, man, because, you know, the rivalry between the U.S. and Mexico and soccer. I love it so much. But if I do have to cheer for a Liga MX team, it's America in Mexico City. That's my team. That's your squad? That's my squad. All right. I like Tijuana Child Dogs, too. But after that, no love. Zero. Zero. It's all inner Miami from them. Women's college basketball game. They got a very good looking girl on Iowa's basketball team. They keep showing. Uh, oh, that's is that the girl that I think got the charge? The offensive foul. Oh, okay. Wow. She, she she's got skills, man. Uh, did they tan her up? Uh, she's very uh, very she's like, um what would be the word? Very unique looking. Very um she looks black. I was gonna say she looks white and black and a little she bit she might be mixed, she might be a little bit of everything. Nonetheless, uh, Iowa, South Carolina, supposedly 3 o'clock. It's going to be the most – will it be more watched than LSU-Iowa? Yes. I think it will. Yes. I thought it wasn't. I think you asked me that the other day or somebody else. I, um, maybe my boy Jay, my boy Jerry did. But um, I, I, at first I said no because of the of the love. But it's last dance. It's the last – the, it's the title game. It's last dance. I thought, I thought that uh, because Angel and, and Caitlin already had – there was already a rivalry there because we saw from what happened last year with right. the ring me and all of that. But no, this is going to be most watched because one they she had beaten South Carolina last season. South Carolina was undefeated and were supposed to face their SEC rival in LSU in a, in the title game. And that didn't happen. Uh, so the ring me thing's a little oh, overdone because that's an LSU tradition. When we win national championships, we point to the ring finger. Joe right, Burrow did but it. You gotta, the baseball but team did what, it. What did we say yesterday? Bird uh, magic. A, bit, a large ghetto woman from Baltimore doing it to a, a sweet uh, uh, Midwestern. Uh, 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 girl. Uh, uh, a, a tall African, a beautiful, tall, beautiful African-American woman who very let, outspoken. who's very outspoken and let you know where she's from. She is from the tough uh, area of Baltimore. And there's America's sweetheart, who, Caitlin who, Clark. Who we overlook talks a lot of trash, but right, <laughs> but it's cool when she does that. Yeah, oh yeah, because she, she's standing up for herself. Yeah, because she's intangible. She's it's the she's same thing with uh, you know when you know I, when I, Brady does it. Brady uh, does it all. He's showing passion and fire. Well, I was, when somebody I, else I, does it. I was going to say uh, there's certain words that people use that are okay if they use them, and other people are not. It's, it's okay. All in how you it's do it, who you are, good. and the but, optics of it all. That's but that's what. The society and the narrative wants, and you know that's the narrative that they want to roll with. Yeah, but I mean, and it, it's ball sells. is ball, it like sells, we, man. Right? We, if we're, <laughs> we're talking about it, we're excited about it. And I Nobody thought Caitlin, I thought Caitlin Clark's always been the, a big person about it. I don't think she's ever tried to fan anything. I got no problem. Yo, listen, she said she's it's a competitors. great I player. I, I, I think about it is with Caitlin. I don't think people hate Caitlin. I think people hate Caitlin's fans who all of a sudden are jumping on like they don't even know. Like it, and because most of her fans are not really her fans, no. because they don't even they didn't know that how great of a player she was. Oh. They're just jumping on it right now because it's oh my god, that's what everybody's talking about. And you know, let me jump on the side. Right. There's a lot of bandwagon fans, or not even bandwagon, so much just to watch it if it's on fans. It's it's okay though. 
I'm going to try to watch this game today. The Marlins go for their first win of the season. I'm trying to find a wait, what channel is this game nine. on? Just keep searching for all. I mean, you can get the Miami rugby, the Miami Sharks rugby game if you want. You can leave that on. That's oh, a replay, too. So never mind. Uh, it's on one of the Bally's channels because I'm looking for I thought we did. There would have been a pregame. The, was the first pitch at 215? 215. Yeah. Hmm. Can't but 0 and 9, by the way, Cardinals today, they go for the sweep 215. Speaking of sweeps, Kane's baseball team trying to avoid a sweep. But Duke beat them yesterday 5 to 4. They also won on Friday. So we'll see how that goes. And the U.S. women's national team defeated Japan 2 to 1 in the She Believes Cup. That game was in Atlanta last night. We're going to do a little bit of women's soccer. Interesting action next. But before we go anywhere else, we got to take a step into the day spa. <laughs> Pennsylvania man was disturbed the other day. When the Northeast earthquake struck right in the middle of him getting a vasectomy. I'm out. <laughs> That's a sign from the good Lord that you need to stop that procedure, man. Imagine of all the times. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. All the times to get a vasectomy. You can't really, and you can't really, you can't sue the doc. No, you, just, you can't sue the, you can't, you can't sue mother act nature. Act of God. It's mother nature. It's act of God. Mother, nah, bro. Right before. You know what he told his old lady? You wanted this. You wanted this. So, but of all the times you get a vasectomy, there is be an earthquake going on in the middle of it. They thought it was a joke. <laughs> Ain't no joking when you got knives and needles down there, man. Hey, yo. Oh, bro. Ju just for the record, never, ever. I'd never be in that position, ever. Nah, man, you're not snipping. Ever. I'm not taking ever. the snip. Ever, mm -mm. ever, mm -mm. ever. Mm -mm. Don't matter. Mm -mm. This relationship is over unless you do it. Mm -mm. Bye. Mm -mm. Bye. It's over anyway, then. Bye. She won it. No, nah, man. You go. Nah, uh. No, never. Ever. Ever. So I don't have to worry about an earthquake during my vasectomy. I don't have to worry about ever, anything uh, during my vasectomy because nah. there ain't no vasectomy. This, wow. That is mad. That is messed up, bro. That is so. <laughs> you can't really sue. You can't it's sue. An act of God. It's an act of God. That's all you got. Bro. Like, what are you going to do? Not gonna have any more babies, that's for sure. Might be peeing in a couple different directions while you're at it. I don't know. I don't know. The woman's game is hot right now. <laughs> Up next, Vlad. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I figured we'd have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna run through some of the team names for the NWSL, which is National Women's Soccer League. I, I said, listen, the women's game is great, but we we you gotta understand which game we're talking about. We're not talking about we're talking about basketball. We ain't talking about soccer. I know, but we're gonna do that. And also, I don't know any of the team's names. Also, the UFL. Oh, that's the rock. You know, he's been in the news lately. You're going to have to decide if A, it's, it's a, a woman's team. Or UFL team. Or C, a, a team that I made up. Oh, okay. That's next. All Stay right. tuned. It's Sports cool. Day 560 WQAM.
women always kind of take center stage on sports day because we love the ladies. But also, you got that big Iowa-South Carolina game about to tip off. It's got one, two, three, four, five panelists getting ready. You ready for the – It's big time. It reached big time. I got to give Bill Simmons credit. He, he's the one I, I – he wrote that uh, on his um, – he tweeted that, actually. And he said, you know, it's reached big time when uh, you got five people on the panel. And he's right. It's absolutely right. It's what everyone feels Five people on a panel and an hour pregame show, the whole nine. And, and people are just everywhere. I've been, like I said, Duffy's in Plantation. People were cheering. Where is, like, yeah. Are night. you you think people are going to show? Yeah, it's got to be most watched, right? What's going to be? What do you think is going to be on more more watch down here locally? The, the, the Heat indie game or the, or the Iowa versus South yeah, Carolina? Yeah, men, men still dominate, man. man. You sure? Because yeah. when we watched that game two weeks ago when – uh. What was it? Uh, what day did I come by and see you? Ooh. Was it Easter? That was St. Patrick's Day. No, it was St. Patty's Day. I knew it was a holiday. St. Patty's Day. Yeah, there was a lot of. It was most. There was nobody was watching the games. It was mostly on the women's game. Yeah, yeah. we'll see, man. It should be interesting. But this is a game I've been wanting to play for you for a while, Vlad. You got a choice now. Since you're not 100 percent versed in the NWSL National no. Women's Soccer League. And nobody's versed in the UFL, the Rocks, Not United yet. Football League, which is no. XFL and USFL reunited. Or there's going to be another option. I'm just going to start making up teams and team names, and you're going to have to decide. So let's do it now. I'm going to start you off with an easy one, a couple of easy ones. I don't want to just burn you out, man. Angel City. Is that NWSL, UFL, or fake? Angel City is NWSL. Correct. Very nice right there. That's because you love them. You talked about them all last season. And they That's had the it. HBO special. And they had the whatever uh, thing they were doing. And it's all woman-owned team. And Natalie what's her name? Portman. Yeah, Natalie Portman. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. You know, I love that. Another easy one. St. Louis Battle Hawks. Is that NWSL, UFL, or am I making it up? UFL. Very nice. How about the Orlando Pride? Is that NWSL, UFL, or am I making it up? NWSL. Very nice. What about the Detroit Downtowners? Is that NWSL? You just made that up. Okay, very good. You made that. So Detroit Downtowners. What is this? <laughs> I mean, I ain't nothing wrong with it. Well, all right. You know what? Let's just move on. I, I could have made a joke out of that. What about Racing Louisville? Is that Racing? NWSL, UFL. Or racing Louis. Wait, say that again. Racing, like racing, driving Louisville. Racing Louisville. Mm -hmm. So the city's name is Louisville. Okay, uh, racing Louisville. I want to say it's a made-up name, but I don't think it is a made-up name. It is the NWSL team in Louisville. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Louisville's a big soccer town, man. Every bar you go to and every brewery okay. they have their supporters and everything like that. But yeah, racing. Louisville okay. is a right. real team. What about, let's see, the San Diego Wave. Is that NWSL, UFL, or made up? St. Louis, San, San, San Diego Wave. Once again, play along at home, too, while Vlad tries to figure San it out. San Diego Wave. Is that S NWS, NWL, NWSL, nice. or... Yeah, yeah, the UFL, right? Yeah. San Diego. I'm going to go made up name. No, it's the NWSL. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, well, I, I, I'm wrong. What about the Memphis Showboats? Oh, that's, uh, no, that's UFL. Oh, you're all, you're all over that one, right? Yeah. I mean, that sounds like a UFL name. What about the Birmingham Baronesses? Is that NWSL, UFL, or made up name? I want to say it's a made up name, but I want to say it's NWSL. Close, but it is a made-up name. Very good, <laughs> and it's close, man. Because you know they got the Bears. Michael Jordan played there. You know? Okay, well, okay. You got a chance on that one. What about the Houston Dash? Is that NWSL, UFL, or made-up name? Made up. No, Houston Dash is an NWSL team. No. NWSL Portland Thorns. Is that a made-up name? Portland Thorns. U NWSL or UFL? Portland what? Thorns, like T H O R N S. I'm gonna say N W S O. Very nice. That is because you got the Timbers, and of course, it is the Rose City, Portland. They have the National Rose Garden there, so you do actually have that. What about the Orlando Mouses? Is that N W S L, U F L, or made up name? 
Say the name again. The Orlando Mouses. Or nah, that's a made that's up. Definitely made that's up. A made up. Correct English. That's so a made up name. <laughs> yeah, I gotta check my English. Sergey goes. How about the Sport Day Fools? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Gotham. No, I can't. Gotham FC. You would know that that would be a soccer team. So some of these names they give themselves away a little bit more than anything else. What about the Michigan Panthers? Is that NWSL, UFL, or made up? That's uh, and that's uh. That's what that's a rock thing. That's a UFL. Okay. What about the Sacramento Queens? Is that NWSL? That's no one. Okay, that's no one. No, that's no one. Because Sacramento Queens, that's what the uh, that's what Shaq and the Lakers used to call the Kings. <laughs> it would be it would be pretty that good. That would have been funny. That though. would be some good marketing. That right would there. be funny. We try to run through a couple of more of these. What about the Atlanta Hot Wings? Is that a UFL, NWSL, or made up name? made up that is made up yeah what about the atlanta lemon peppers is that a definitely made up <laughs> definitely made up that's 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 out, that's out of respect for lou will <laughs> that's out of respect for our boy lou will oh, a little bit of love right there <laughs> that's funny what about the seattle kings is that nwsl that's made UFL up or made up that's gotta be made up because i don't i know most of the seattle teams there's nothing like that, yeah. What about the Seattle Rain? Is that NWSL? That's know? NWSL. Yeah, very nice. It's R E I G N. Yeah, very yeah, clever. Yeah. Very clever, right there. Yeah. Well, that goes with the the Rain Man. Rain, you know, everybody knows about Seattle and the Rain. But yeah, I get it. What about the Bay Area Ballers? Is that NWSL, UFL, or made up? Made up. Good job. I'm making up a lot of these team names. Although I think they should take those under advisement. No. What about North Carolina Courage? NWSL, yeah, yeah. UFL, or Made up. Made up. San Antonio Bra. I'm not even telling you if you're right or wrong anymore. <laughs> San Antonio Brahmas. San Antonio Brahmas? NWSL, UFL, or made I up. I would say it's UFL, but I don't think it is. No, you're right. You're right. They were on TV yesterday. You weren't paying attention. And what about the Miami Tootsies? Nah. <laughs> I just wanted to end on something pretty sweet. I mean, it's real, but it's not a team. Oh, it's a team. It's, it's, it's not, not a team on a in the, in, in, the, in the UFL in an organized league. Yeah, <laughs> that right there is a little NWSL UFL are made up. Up next, gonna do a little something or nothing. Vlad, you're making a lot of decisions. You're calling a lot of shots today, and it's gonna continue next here on Sports Day 560 WQAM. <laughs>
in there. Sicilian bitch with long hair, with coconut dairy gear, like smoking the thinnest air. I open the lamp of green and hoping the crack is steaming. Like, look at that, that, that breezy. He's just a want beast. you to hear some of that Lil Wayne. Like he was in town a while and back. A little something or nothing that we have happening right now. We're going to be getting into it in just a second. Something. You want to hear something? The Miami Marlins. I know it's early. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. But the Miami Marlins are up 7 to nothing in the second to the Cardinals. Looking to exercise those demons. Get the first win of the season. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. It will be an all-time low for the Miami Marlins if they have taken a 7 to nothing lead after one and a half innings and lose to the Cardinals for their 10th loss of the season in 10 tries. That's going to be an all-time low. I'm going to have to drink a lot tonight to get past that. Not that I'm not drinking a lot tonight, nonetheless. Whoo, man. Now, if you're watching us right now on YouTube and Twitch, you might see that my cousin Vladimir Lewison has done a costume change. He looks a little different right now. Vlad's kind of caught up doing something. I don't know. He was yelling in the hallway about LeBron James. Jimmy Menthol has stepped in just to kind of make sure everything's quality control in the meantime. But very excited about the Miami Marlins being up seven to nothing. It's the middle of the second, though. So fingers crossed. We'll hopefully be okay. In just a minute, we're going to do a little something or nothing. I also saw Iowa is defeating South Carolina early in the game. It's, it was 11 to six. So that national championship game is going on right now. But that's always a little something. Got the Miami Heat today. They are playing. Five o'clock, a little somewhat of matinee basketball as they take on the enemy Pacers. This is going to be for sole possession of sixth place in the East. The Heat have everything in front of them. All they have to do is win these big games. Figure they might drop one here or there, but today you got to get this one. You want that sixth seed. You want to win this one, get in that sixth seed, and hold off because you have four more games, one against the Hawks in Atlanta, one here in Miami against a good Mavericks team, then two more at home right here against the Toronto Raptors. Very exciting for the Heat, knowing that they have a chance to control their own destiny and avoid that playing game and get the rest. I think a lot of people are overlooking the week's rest for an aging team that could just use the time off to heal up, get right, spo more time to kind of game plan. That That's a big-time advantage for this team. So, whew, got a lot going on in the sports world, but it's all important. It's all good. Vlad, the Marlins, they're up. Seven nothing, and it's not on TV. Middle of second inning. No, no, and no. it's not on TV. I've gotten confirmation that they're up seven nothing. Now it's only the middle of the second, but this would be the all-time low if they were to go up seven nothing in the middle of the second and then lose the game and be zero and ten on the season. I I don't know if I could come back from that, Vlad. I might mm. cry. Shout out to my boy Jimmy. I guess he was upset when I went to the vending machine. I guess uh, no, Jimmy, commercial break was uh. He came in here and uh, he just kind of made sure everything was all right. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, listen, I'm going to explain to you. I'm sorry to the to, to the viewers. It. I was talking to, uh, to the great Tommy Ty. He'll be on pregame in just a couple Right. Of and Tommy and I were just talking about the heat. And I just asked him, you know, how does he feel about tonight's game? And he's like, feels good. You know, he feels good. He thinks it's going to be a tough game. Of course. And then, of course, I was talking to him about, you know, the heat, the heat fan base being upset with us because of our, our push Ron, to Bronte. bring Bron and Bronny to. I'm not Miami, energetic, man. I'm not gonna lie. Same and way. he thought it was interesting. Yeah. He thought it was interesting. It's very interesting. Yes. Look, if any national pundits want to pick up on this, go ahead. Feel free. We're willing. We're willing to explain our points. Finer points. Oh, they're gonna they're definitely gonna jump on this. They definitely gonna take this. <laughs> Let's get to some something or nothing real quick. Major League Baseball's Players Association says the shorter pitch clock has caused. The recent rash of pitching injuries in baseball. Yes. Something or nothing. Uh, huh? Something or nothing. That's it's something, but I think it's something. I think it's BS. Like you can't wait a minute. You're gonna get hurt because you're pitching. Time out. So when I said that last year, right? Everybody was like, oh no, it's no, no, no. And then I finally, Vlad finally is like, you know what? You guys are right. You guys are right. The pitching clock is great. It's moved the game so 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 swiftly. You're there, and then you're out of the you're out of the stadium. You, you still have the rest of your night. You might even you still have time to play with play with with your kids, take your 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 wife out, anything like that. Yep. And then now they're saying, oh no, the the pitch clock is now the cause of the of the rash of injuries, uh, pitching injuries. Yeah, that's the players' association too. And the pitching, yeah, player association. Okay. 
cool. Mm. All right. Speaking of pitchers that were injured often, Steven Strasburg has made it official at 35. He is retired. His last pitch, June 9th, 2022. But remember, he was the 2019 MVP of the World Series for the Washington Nationals. Is that something or nothing? It is something. St Strasburg had such, such, such electric stuff, man. Uh, not even electric stuff, but so much hype coming out. True. You know, man. I think he might have been one of those guys that was signed under with Under Armour. Um, and um, it was him. Was it Bryce Harper as well? It was a it was a lot of hype under Strasburg, and um, when he pitched, he was great. He was great, but there was too many injuries. But he did lead that national team. I think he did help that national team win that twenty nineteen World the, Series. He won the MVP. He won the MVP series. that year. Yeah, yeah you know what? He's good yeah. with all the hype and everything that happened with him. He still won the title. Yep, he did. And did and he, he, he retired what at thirty five. Yep, he made it official today. 15 year career, what 13 maybe? Well, I mean, he, I mean, get, June 9th, 2020 was the last time he pitched. And oh, that was the only time wow. he pitched that season. That was the last time he pitched. Yeah, so it's kind of been like three years since so, he yeah. pitched. Hey, you know what? Still, with all the hype that he had, he still was a World Series champion look, and a World Series MVP. So when if he your was number one pick overall, brings you a, a title. That's it. Yeah, that's he, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all you can ask. I don't care if they don't, you know, play as well as you think they should have. If they were injured more than you think, you tell me like the Dolphins. Tua Tagovailoa wins us one championship. We're good. We're good. Happy. Well, let me ask you that. Forget. If he gets you to a Super Bowl, did he do good? Yeah, we're good. I just want a playoff win, man. I haven't I haven't gotten high off a playoff win in so long. I mean, I'm, I'm not – I mean, I am a lifelong Dolphins fan because growing up I love Dan Marino. But, like, Saints haven't even won a playoff game in so long. Like, God, oh, the high is so good. Super Bowl, it's like – uh, you know, I, I can't. Uh, I, I got a comparison. I'm not comparing it though. Patriots and safety Kyle Duggar have agreed to a four year extension worth 66 million, 32 of it guaranteed. Is that something or nothing? I mean, it's nothing. I mean, it's something for him. That's good. Uh, Patriots are always going to have a good defense, but it's nothing because that's they need more on the other side of the on the on the field. So they're still suck. Yeah, he, he could be that's great. He could, uh, you know, stop them from scoring, but is he going to help them to score? Yeah, and I don't think Tua Tungvalu is staying up in that like, oh, Kyle Duggar, he's coming for me. Until, you know, Kyle Duggar does something like returns a pick six and on Tua. And then don't you, earn your money, Kyle Duggar. Then Duggar. you'll be saying, oh, man, don't you dare earn your money, Kyle Duggar. Yeah, well, but it's nothing. St. <laughs> Vincent, one of my favorite indie artists, her real name is Annie Clark. She says the recent covers of Leonard Cohen's Alleluia on American Idol, worst thing she's ever heard, something or nothing. <laughs> Uh, it's nothing to me. <laughs> very positive attitude right yeah, there. Yeah, very, very positive attitude. You might like this one. J. Cole has responded to the Kendrick. Yeah, Kendrick it's Kendrick. nothing, baby. Yeah, it's something. The song is called Seven Minute Drill. Here's one of the lines, and I'll have to edit myself. Your first beep was classic. Your last beep was tragic. Your first ish was classic, right? Yeah, was it? Yeah. No, no, no. What's the next one? Classic. Your yeah. last ish was tragic. Was tragic. And then was it the third? I didn't get any deeper than no, that. No, he said something. People, people, uh, your last thing was gassed it. Okay. Yeah, he's the... So, listen. I've seen both it's of them It's something. Live. I've seen both of them live. It's something. and But I'm going to say, it's something light. It's very light. I don't it mind was a, It was a little jab. Thing. It was a little jab to Kendrick's response to him. Uh, if you listen to the first song that I played uh, uh, from the show, it was the, re it was the response... That uh, Future had. It was a song from the Future album with Metro Boomin, where Kendrick Lamar responded to Drake and J. Cole. So J. Cole responded to Kendrick's response. And I think it was light. It was very light. It was very cute. It was cute. Uh, if you notice, it was very, it was along the lines of Jay Z and Nas, you know, when Jay Z went at Nas and said, Your yeah, first album was a classic. Um, you know, everything else you've done has been garbage, you know, so it's like a hot album every 10 years. So basically, he's what he's trying to say to Kendrick, trying what J. Cole's trying to Kendrick. You're pretty much just like Nod. You had a hot album. The other one was trash and everything you've done was pretty much garbage. So we'll see. Answer me this, lad. Was we'll that see. Nas on part one of his diss tracks of Jay-Z where he made fun of his lips? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know if it was Nas or if it was Nas made fun of. Yeah, he said he yeah, had yeah, DSL. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, I got a little hip hop in me. Yeah. Get this: a Delaware man was shot by police 
but then proceeded to steal one of the police cars and lead them on a multi-state chase for That's hours. That's something. That's something, so man. G, man. He's a... Yo. Boom! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, give me the car! Let's get out of my way! And then hours later... Hours! With a gun shot! shot with a gunshot! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Stop. You stop. Look, I'm not going to say I respect someone that gets shot by the police and leads He's them on tough. a multi-state chase for hours, but that physical feat is impressive. You got to admit that. He's tough. Like, I'm not saying, what he did is wrong. What you did is wrong. Not it's absolutely him. wrong. But the fact that he still kept on going. <laughs> but that's a physical feat in itself. I'm just saying. It's impressive. I'm just saying. The oldest man in the world is a British guy. You want to guess how old he is, Vlad? Current that we know of. Current oldest man in the world. British man. How old do you think he is? Oldest British man. Don't guess like 95. No, it can't be. He's got to be in the triple digits if he's old. <laughs> yes. I'm going to... Uh... Where would you want to live? I'm gonna go 117. No, I would think older too, but it's 111. Oh, that's not bad. 111. That, I mean, you think about it. You get to 100, that's a landmark. You, you know, know it's triple digits, and but damn, you triple digits, but you're in the debt. You like, you're not. You throwing up triple ones? Nah, yeah, you, you triple ones. Yeah, go pick up some ladies. Like, you're a Yo, decade plus I'm, on I'm, you? A, I'm not just a one. I'm you're a, a triple one. You're a decade. Like you've done a decade. You've done over a decade past past the, past past the, the century. Mark. Yeah, yeah, not. Nah, Shout out to you, man. That's sure, something. One eleven, sure. and he's, he's still good. He's got all his um, all, all his faculties. Cool. Yeah, I yeah. talk to him. No, I'm just saying. They're not saying he's seen all the people or, that like drink a glass of wine or a glass of brandy every night. Like they just they, they just mellow good out. Good for him, man. That's something. An 80 year old American was killed when an elephant attacked him during a safari in Zambia. Is that something or nothing? Yeah, it's something. You should never go. You're in their land. And now I'm going to ask one of my other favorite questions, Vlad. What do you think the ethnicity of this man was? Oh, he's got to be a tangible. He's intangible. He's there's right. No, there's no brother going out to safari. Listen, first, here's the thing. Let me tell you something about brothers, man. And and I'm going to tell you something about most people other than whites. Go on. All go right? on. I, I, I can speak to it. Everybody other than the whites know don't mess with somebody in their terrain. Why that's their home. That's their territory. I'm gonna ask my my brother in this. Why do we take such weird, stupid vacations? Like I ain't going on a submarine. I don't need to go see lions and elephants chasing me down halfway across the world. What are we doing? Not in their surroundings. What are we doing? What like that's just dumb to me. Like why would you want to go to their? I'm not going cliff diving. Who do you think cliff dives, Vlad? Who do you think invented cliff diving? Free base jumping. White people. Why? Why? I'm very mad at myself right now. Very mad. With that being said, next month I'm going to go on a cliff diving and a safari, which would be very interesting. But also, a woman says since her mother-in-law was widowed, the mother-in-law has moved in with her and her husband, and the mother-in-law constantly interrupts them during sex because she doesn't want them being too close. She's jealous that her son may find a woman he loves more than his mom. Something or nothing. Wait, don't, don't, don't. So they get it on and mom walks in the wait, door. Wait, uh -uh. Wait, they're married already? Oh yeah, they're married. So She's what the hell? With them. He, oh, he's living at his parents' house? No, no. The mother-in-law lives with them because nah, her yeah, husband I, died. Yeah, yeah. You might have to... I'm sorry. It's, it's probably bad for me to say you, you might have to... Where does she get the nerve to walk in on you that? Have, not only you might have to kick your mom out, you might have to send her somewhere. You got to send her to the home. Like, you might have to send her to the home. She needs she needs yeah. more care than I can give her. First that's of all, you're interrupting me while I'm getting it on, and yeah, you're trying to tell, like go. like you got to go. That's got to go. You got to go because that's not something you can brush off if you're the guy. Like your mom walks in the room, you can't be like, okay, just don't don't worry about it. I'll be fine. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. nah. Look, I, I'm siding with. I'm gonna have to side with her on this. I, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna side with everybody except the mother-in-law. Yeah. I'll say this though, Vlad. I don't know how you say it, but this is how I say it. You need more help than I can give you. So we need to send you somewhere where you can get 24-hour care. Because I can't give you enough care that you deserve and that you need. You need more than me. Mom, I found a really nice place that will take care of you. I'm a good son, right? <laughs> Back after this, 560 WQAM. <laughs>
It's time for Sports Day. Turn it up. It's Sports Day with Dan Day. Taking it to 345 today. Appreciate all the people that have been along for the entire ride. Sergey, even though he's begrudgingly been with us, Menu, we appreciate it. My dude, dude, Steph Gelman, always much love. Bob in the house. Everyone that's just joined us, whether you're here for the whole ride or part of the ride, it's been a good time and been a long, a long, good, interesting ride. We've gotten to a lot of good things tonight. Biggest game of the year for the Miami Heat, taking on the Indiana Pacers. Winner gets sole possession of sixth place with just four games left on the season, controlling their own destiny. That's all you ask for to control your own destiny. And this is a chance, even though it is in Indiana, and we do kind of have a little bit of a rivalry with them in the past. Controlling your own destiny is all you can ask for. Now you got to go out there and take care of business. Yesterday in the sports world, a lot of business got taken care of. Oh, wait, let's check on the Marlins real quick. Are they still up 7 nothing in the fourth? They might get that win today. They did not get the win yesterday, though, real quick. We're going to wrap up everything that happened in the sports world yesterday. Play a little pit bull at the same time during the montage. Enter Miami defending the goal towards the left in front of their ultras. Mr. Worldwide, big skills. This will sell more coffee than Starbucks. The Patriots in white right to left, Boston in black left to right. We are off and running here at TD Garden. Ding, ding, the well, he's got a man that flirted with a 400 average leading off for them. The batting champion, Luis Arise, the fly ball center field. Pickner's got the second, says I'll take it. A little skip and a hop, and he makes it again. Top of the 18, one touch shot. Oh! Scrape the chuck off the cue. Messi in the corner. We're tied at one. What a ball from Negri. What a finish from Messi. And Purdue has one more step down Redemption Road. The team that lost last year to a 16 will play on Monday for a national title. Purdue 63, North Carolina State 50. The inbound for in history. One win away from a repeat national championship. And the Cardinals win it. It's a 3 1 final score. Outstanding pitching for the Cardinals. More bad luck for the Marlins, who fall to 0 9. And Jimmy tomorrow. The birds go for a sweep. I would have taken the 2 2 draw based on the lineup that I saw prior to the game. Well, that's the final score from Chase Stadium in Fort Lauderdale. Enter Miami 2, the Colorado Rapids 2. She ripped away. Boquist along. It's down to our left. Near circle. Away the shot. He scores. Top shelf. Yes, for Boquist. Boston takes it 3 2 in overtime. I had to play that pit bull during the montage because yesterday I told you about when I got out, I was going to see the Miami Film Festival film. It was an Argentinian film called Vera and the Pleasure of Others. It was in Little Havana. So afterwards, I was already in Little Havana. I figured, why not run around? Went to Cafe La Trova, the world-famous Cafe La Trova. It was packed. There was Latin Cuban music going all over the place. But then decided a little change of pace. Went to Ball and Chain, and the DJ just played Pitbull nonstop. I was like... I know it's Lil Havana, but you can't throw in some bad bony or something else. No. And then that song came on and someone turned to me and goes, do you even know what he's saying? I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what he's saying. He said, I got coffee. You got milk. And they're like, oh, oh okay. Well, you knew that part. I was like, I got it. So like, if I say cafe au lait, do you know what that means? I mean, come on, man. Give us some credit, man. Do you know what he means though by asking, I got coffee, you got, no, I don't know what that means. Please explain it to me in English or French or Spanish or Portuguese or Cantonese or whatever. I got you. Wow, you look tall. Me? 
Yeah, like also, like you look like you're looking down on me. Like oh, I'm looking at us uh, on 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 the YouTube. I can fix that. <laughs> yeah, why? It's like, wait a minute. Why do I look so short? Uh, you know, five foot ten. Hold on. I, I like when people doubt your oh, height. There you go. There I'm, we I'm go. like, hey, there we go. I like people with there doubt my go. height. They're like, oh man, I'm like I'm five foot ten. They're like, no, you're not. There we no. go. All right, I feel better now. I was like, oh my god, you're not five foot ten. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Let's get to these headlines but, real quick. But to answer, before we get to the headlines, oh, yeah, to answer, yeah, I, I do hate when the fact when people, I think they they should be more, um, I think they, they should be happy that you, a non-Hispanic, was willing to go and experience this film and enjoy this film. Loved it. And you really did love it because I have actually all the time. And you were like, when you went to go see the movie, it was you and your girl. Uh, it wasn't what you expected, but it was be- actually good. Yeah, because you thought it was going to be more erotic. Very, very, very sexual. I thought, and it started with a very, very uh, you know interesting sex scene. I thought it was that was the whole movie, but it actually kind of steered more clear of that. There were some scenes, like most movies, especially international films, but it wasn't as erotic as I thought it would be. It was more about the story about the young girl. Don't want to get into it too much, but yeah, Vera, and, and, and I don't think they're playing anymore at the festival, but. Uh, Vera and the pleasure of others. It was very interesting, kind of parking out there, and a woman's out there speaking Spanish, smoking a cigarette. She turns to me, she goes, Hey, you know Spanish? I said, No, nah, but I mean, I got enough French. And she's like, You might not understand the movie, but you know, my cousin, she's the director. If you want to meet her, I was like, How did you flip the switch from being a uh, Latinx to being like a woman just smoking outside of a movie theater? <laughs> She was like, oh, what's your name? How you doing? What's going on? I was like, oh, cool. Let's go. Let's go. But it was, it was interesting. And now, the movie was in subtitles. I didn't need the subtitles so much. It's pretty obvious what was going on most of the case, man. There's something. I was trying to explain the movie to you, Vlad, off the air. And it's kind of confusing if you don't see the movie because there's a lot of shifts and turns, if you could guess. Nonetheless, let's get to some headlines. The Heat yeah, Pacers, it's pretty interesting. They face off at 5 o'clock. There's moms. There's dads. There's friends. There's... Boyfriends, girlfriends, there's strangers. There's it's a good Argentinian movie. Try to get it online if you can, and uh, don't watch it with your mother-in-law if you get a chance. Don't do that. The Heat and the Pacers face off at 5 o'clock today. Indiana half a game up on Miami for the sixth playoff spot in the East. The Panthers, Vlad, I want you to break this down. Panthers are starting to tread lightly with this kind of losing So, yeah. Down. Go ahead. They we lost didn't know. Three, three to Boston. So, you know, thought, no, 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 don't worry do, I'm doing what I do during this time of the year, which is look at the standings and trying to see, you know, um, what you call magic numbers, this, that, and the other, who you're facing. Panthers are now five points behind the Boston Bruins with four games to play. Um, I don't believe they're going to, they're going to win the Atlantic division. I don't believe that. Five points, four games to play. Yeah, I don't believe they're going to, Boston's going to lose all these four games. So the Panthers are have 102 points. Bruins are at 107. The Toronto Maple Leafs are third, and they're at 97 points. Mm-hmm. They have six games to play, Ooh. while the Panthers have floor four. But it gets more interesting. One of the games, which happens to be the Panthers' final game, is against the Maple Leafs. Ooh. Folks, after that game. The Maple Leafs final game is against the Lightning the next day, which is, I believe, um, I think the season ends not this upcoming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. That's interesting. Which would be the 16th. I be- the season ends on the 16th. Um, the, but the Lightning season ends the following day, which I believe would be the 17th. So with five points behind the Panther, uh, Panthers, the Maple Leafs are, they literally just have to win one more one game. If they win one game and the Panthers win one game, and when when I mean by that is that they do face each other. Say that they face each other, right? When they face each other and the the, the Panthers lose that game, mm-hmm. if the Maple Leafs are one point behind the Panthers and they play the Lightning the next day and they beat the Lightning, they'll be one point ahead of the Panthers. So right as of right now, the Panthers are ahead of the Maple Leafs, but there's a chance that if the Maple Leafs run the next six games, they'll be ahead of the Panthers, and the Panthers will be going to Toronto to start the, the playoffs instead of hosting the right, Maple Leafs. Home ice because right now, as we speak, if the Panthers, if the season ended today, Panthers will be hosting Maple Leafs. If the playoffs 
in two weeks begin, yeah. there's a chance the Panthers don't have to leave this, their home right. for a good three to four weeks. State of Florida. They'll stay in Florida because the next two weeks, they're in Florida. They play the next game. The, the four games here is in Florida. They play what? Uh, I believe what? Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then Tuesday again. And then the playoffs start probably the, the following week. So they don't, there's a good chance the, the Panthers don't have to leave Sunrise for a good month. But that's if they handle business. If they don't handle business, they've been struggling. They continue to struggle. That's a good chance they'll be heading up to Toronto to begin the playoffs. Mm hmm. Keep playing around. F around and find out. That's how you ruin seasons. Fafo. That's how you ruin seasons. You keep effing around, you're going to find out. Yeah. Don't don't play like that. Let's let's go ahead. Let's secure some things. Let's get that home ice. Let's let's move on. Please. Cuz you've given us a scenario that and you say eh, it won't happen. It's happened before. But bro, like that. It's happened dude, before. look how you know reason why I'm looking at it cuz Kuzan, when we started this last year, right? What was going on at this time? We we were way out of the playoff picture. It, they, Pittsburgh had to no, fall apart. They were no, but not even that. The Panthers only had to win one game. They kept on losing games. They were just so fortunate that other teams that could have surpassed them lost as well. Teams that were losing to to bad teams, you know, they were losing to bad teams. That's one thing I give hockey, the sport of hockey, credit. You know, we, we were making fun of the NBA teams like Toronto when they come in next week to, to finish the season in mm -hmm. Miami. We were saying one, two, three, Cancun. They don't do that in hockey. They don't. No, because guys. bad teams were beating good teams and, and denying them entrance into the wild card and into the postseason. And this is happening right now. Look at the Philadelphia Flyers have lost like seven in a row. And all of a sudden now, the New York Islanders, the 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 Pittsburgh Penguins, the all these teams right now are in the, in the hunt for the wild card spot. So still got some games to watch, baby. Caitlin He's... Clark nails a three. Iowa up 10-0 on South Carolina. I don't know where I got that last score. It must have been a highlight from last year's game. But Iowa's up 10-0 on South Carolina. Caitlin Clark just bagged a three. Hey. They too big. They too big. South Carolina's too big. They got that. They got Cardoza. Yeah, she, Camila well, Cardoza. Caitlin Clark again. Oh, she got fouled. Of course she's going to get the call. I mean, come on. <laughs> if you miss, you got fouled. If you made it, it's okay. Uh, Lionel Messi, he scored a goal in just his 12th minute on the pitch as a substitute yesterday. He also got an assist in her Miami Tide. Were they, were they down 2-0? Oh, Rapids. No, they were down 1-0. Oh, they were down 1-0. Okay. They went up 2-1. Didn't get it. The Marlins, they're winning. Seven to nothing. Good. The fifth. This could be the first one of the year. One and, and nine. And you can't see it on TV right now. One and nine. Yeah, well, I know. It's gotten that bad. At least I can't. Wounds college basketball game. We talked about that. The men's national championship. Game Tomorrow tonight, night, 920, 9 right? UConn and Purdue. I'm calling Purdue. Japanese Grand Prix. <laughs> Suzuka, <laughs> Japan. F1 racing. Max Verstappen. MVS with another win. You already know. And another one. And another one. And he, he, well, DJ Khaled, he does go to the F1 race here. Maybe, maybe that should be the new thing. Like anytime for Stappen wins, and another one, and, and another one. one, and another one. He's won all the Miami Grand Prix. So I don't know. Speaking of another one, one more time, let's take a step into the day spa. Ah, Vlad, I'll try to help you out if you're ever looking for a job. There's trickery in this world when it comes to finding a job. A company looking to hire sales engineers. I don't know what that means. A company looking to hire sales engineers says they take out prospective employees and try to pump them full of alcohol to see if they have self-control and not drink too much. Now, you know, that's why I'm not a sales engineer because you've opened up the bar to me. It's on, bro. Yeah, let me ask you this. <laughs> yeah, I, I always say yes. Keep let me ask you this. If somebody left you a key to a bar, You'd be like, hey, just you you handle everything for the night. Are you opening the bar for business? Or are you just taking you just having a night or you, oh, are you having a party for yourself oh, no, no, and no, inviting no. friends? I'm definitely opening up the bar. And I mean, no one's paying anything <laughs> all night long. I'm gonna be drinking my ass off. And I'll be like, I'll pay what you want. They're gonna hate me. Don't ever give me the keys to it. But no, I mean, no, I would definitely open up the bar and I definitely would charge nobody anything and just take tips all night and drink like crazy. So you know my lifestyle. Up next, going to wrap things up here on Sports Day 560 WQAM.
two days prior. Right, right, right. Oh, getting you ready for Blue Heat with Alejandro Solana. It's going to be Tommy Tig on the free game. Jason Jackson on the call. Tommy Tig, Alejandro Solana with host Heat. Hopefully, celebration of winning the biggest game of the year for the Heat, which would solidify them in the sixth spot, at least for now. We shall see. I do want to say this, Vlad. Miami Marlins up 7 nothing in the fifth. Team's been hitting well, but we're not supposed to talk about it, so we're not going to talk about it. But my guy, Max Meyer, is having... The best day a pitcher can have so far. I'm not talking. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying. I'm just saying he's having the type. Whoa! Of day, having the type of day, at least through five innings, that you want to have as a pitcher. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is it the ultimate, ultimate one? No. Oh, is it the, the ultimate, ultimate? Oh, okay. Let, so let, let, let me make sure. No, no, no. We're 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 clear. Oh we're no, clear. no. It's the ultimate, ultimate one. We're clear. Is he um? Yep, we're clear. Is he a dime right now? We're clear. He's the dime? What do you mean? I, I, I don't know. I, a just... dime? Is he a 10? Like, that's what I'm asking you. Because I haven't looked at the box score or anything like that. So what you're telling me is something that we you don't want to mention, especially. Do not mention it. Right. So but that's why only, I want to know. I only... want to know if it's the ultimate, ultimate yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So it's the yeah, ultimate, yeah, ultimate yeah, yeah. one. The man's making no mistakes. Like, no mistakes. there's just nothing but egg, just eggs. Zeros everywhere. Okay. That's we're what talking that's about. A... That's what I'm talking. The about. only number in his stat line is the innings he's pitched in his. Got outs. you, got you. That's why I, I don't want to say oh, the p no, word. No, I didn't want to no, say the no, p no, word. You can say it. Now. I can say the p word. It literally happened just. Now. Uh, okay, he so perfection is gone. Okay, good. So <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so us, Max way. Meyer had a perfect game going on to the, what the uh, fifth inning. Yeah, then the Cardinals have now scored a run. Oh yeah, well, there you go. But let's stop talking about. Oh, dude, that's the lowest of the low. We talked about this. If they're zero and nine, and then they get a seven nothing lead and lose it. Oh man! I, I told you they're gonna happen. It's gonna happen. A couple things we went through today: LeBron James, Bronny James. It might behoove the Heat to try to get both those guys on the team. I know that's an unpopular sentiment, but if you do the math, it's not the worst sentiment in the world. The Marlins—they were flirting with perfection. Not anymore. It's seven to one. I don't like the scent that I'm smelling around here in South Florida sports right now. I don't know if this spring's we, gonna be good right we now. Spoke about the Panthers. They better stop playing with this fire. They better extinguish that little and that to, little little. I don't know if it's a little now. It's that that little fire. That fire's gotten it's gotten it's picked up some um, no pun intended, steam. Like yeah. it's 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 blazing now. Iowa, they got out early on South Carolina. Caitlin Clark and the ladies, 22-15, the score now. I said that I think Iowa would come out, but once South Carolina starts getting their footing, I think South Carolina's going to find a way to win the game. God, she's so big. Like, she's too tall. Girls. <laughs> she's too tall. You know how I knew she was a factor? When Angel Reese, who's a tall him? girl. No, Angel Reese no better. First of all, you're not come on, she's Brazilian. She knows she knows uh jujitsu and all of that, man. <laughs> MMA all MMA that. fighting, yeah, that's a big thing. She'll kill, she'll kill Angel. No, when Angel went for a re Angel got a rebound and went to put the ball back up, and <laughs> she looked short. Yeah. Like all Cardoza did was put her arms out. I was like, oh, she's different. Um, Iowa started off well, 10-0. And now South Carolina's come back on a uh 15 to 10 run as a 22 15 game. Yeah. So still midway I, through I, the first half. Ooh, Cardoza got stuffed down her face. But no, I really do. I really do think South Carolina sorry, is first going to wear them down with time and win the championship. I, I'm I'm happy for both teams. I like Caitlin Clark like everybody in the country does. And I like Dawn Staley and Cardoza. And I love Dawn too. Staley. And I I have nothing but respect for Caitlin Clark. For I love her game. And um, I don't think, and I, one thing I could say about her, even though she, like you said, she talks trash. I don't care. Let her talk trash on the court. It's not disrespectful or anything as like that. As long as you're respectfully talking. I mean, I say respectfully talking trash. You know what I mean. So. That South Carolina is on a comeback right there. Watch out for the Lady Gamecocks. Back to you. I, I'm happy you said game. Game. Uh, Blood, what do you got to go on the rest of the day? You're just going to kind of relax, feel good? Uh, yeah, man. Going to relax, chill. Probably watch night two. Game. Watch oh. night two of uh, WrestleMania. Could be a historic night in WrestleMania it history. It could be a historic night. I'm, I How can't long wait. has Roman Reigns been the world heavyweight champion of wrestling? Nearly four years. Four years? Yeah. Wow. Wow. That would be the ultimate swerve if WWE lets him retain that belt tonight. I want him to. That would be the ultimate. Dan, let me tell you why. Popular, that Dan, let him keep it's it. not only that he's that popular. It's not that about, about the popularity. What he's done is something that I don't think people, you got to give respect to. 
because he's the champion and he's the bad guy and everybody wants to beat him like they want the fans want him to be beaten that means every challenger that goes against him you have a vent a vested interest and he what he's done is that everybody that you he wrestles you're in you're into it as in the fan base you want you want to see if this guy's going to be the one to to pull it off but you need a character it's like it's just like a movie bro yeah, you all, need antagonists, you need antagonists and all of that. Lines. Right. It and can't it, just be like I thought it was going to be yesterday where it's getting it on the whole time. That's not it. That's no. not a movie. That's something no. else. You no. need storylines. I need storylines, and that's what they're doing right good guys, now. Bad guys, good guys, good guys. That's good what they're doing right now. And he's the bad guy. He's the ultimate bad guy. And what's Some good? When, stories, plots. So, right. So when you have the ultimate bad guy, that means you can make many good guys. And if you make many good guys, that means you make many challengers. And many challengers means more money and that's what they're doing Good and job. right now the wwe is in a probably one of the best stages um in their uh illustrious history in this illustrious history this is probably the this is a new era they don't they don't know what to call the new era dan it's just the era i thought caitlin clark every time she shoots i, I light up it was 10 nothing now it's 24 to 20. And it's, Yo, south carolina is gonna score. win this game oh I'm it's gonna so, be a blowy i'm so scared to check out this marlin score it's gonna be a blowy oh, it's still seven to one okay well the marlins are at bat so they can't have the deficit cut at least not right now oh man oh yeah they're going to the top of the six today i gotta go to whole foods you know i love that i'm gonna go to north beach whole foods and what then, else are you gonna do and then i am going to drink some beer that's always good. I don't think I'm doing anything else. I think I'm going to relax, chill out the rest of the day. I'm going to watch. I'm going to listen to the preheat with Alejandro Solana and Tommy Tig, And then I'm going to go home and try to come. Well, this Marlins game will probably be over because baseball's so fast now. Um, keep an eye on this heat game. Um, who knows? I, I really don't think I'm doing too much. I, I did enough last night. Like I said, I went to Cafe La Trova and Ball and Chain. And it wasn't expensive, but it definitely wasn't cheap, man. Uh, Cafe La Trova. You order your food as the words are coming out of your mouth. They bring you the food. It's so wait, fast. <laughs> wait, what? Have you ever been on Cafe Ocho? Have you been to Cafe La Trova? I haven't been to uh, yeah, Cafe. I need some spinach empanadas. Blink. Here they go, sir. I'm like, whoa, whoa. That's the greatest service ever. Can bro. I get a funky boot to hop before I could say gun? Your IPA, sir. I'm like, whoa, whoa. Really? So anything you order, they, it's just there immediately. I, I kid you not. Minute and a half later. Really? There. Yeah, hot, red, hot or cold, whatever it's supposed to be, right there, man. Okay. And then I went to Ball and Chain. And then I went to the Union Beer Store, which is like a dive bar on Calle Ocho. Great place. Somebody actually on the text line, 305-567-0560, they suggested it. I didn't see it until today. I just walked by Union, and I was like, place looks dope. Let's go. Went in. Great time. Calle Ocho, it reminds me a little bit of Bourbon Street. Of course, there's some big differences there, but it has similarities to bourbon with the way it's set up and kind of like that. It's a lot less boozy, but it, it has some similarities. So I'm ready to go back to Kyocho one day. And then next week, I'm going to go see another movie, eh, probably, and cheer on the heat. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'm probably just going to drink some beers. I got some. Oh, I stopped at this gas station. Have you been up to this gas station on Bithin? It's just a little looking gas station on the inside. It is just loaded full of craft beer and wine. It's kind of like in the fork of the road of Biscayne as you're going downtown from El Portal and Little Haiti. Have you ever have you ever been there? You wouldn't know it, but everybody swears like, "Do you have to go?" I was like, "It's just a little crappy gas station. Go in there and literally craft beer everywhere. You can break off singles. You don't have to buy the whole wine everywhere, and it's full of drinkers. When I say drinkers, like craft beer and wine drinkers, they're all like getting their beers and wines. I was like, "Holy goodness!" So I bought some stouts last night. I'm gonna go home and drink those too. Nice. It's right there. Go down Biscayne towards downtown. When you get to like 70th, there's like a fork in the road. You'll see it. It looks like an unassuming gas station. It is basically a craft liquor store. Only I would do that on a what Saturday night in Miami. I don't know. I don't know. So, bud, you with me? South Carolina probably going to beat Iowa in the national championship game. Absolutely. South Carolina will win. Connecticut will win. You got Purdue tomorrow. I got Purdue. And Ride with Marlins will win today. First win of the year. They're 7-1 in the top and of the six. And hopefully the Heat will win tonight. I got the Heat winning tonight. I do. And then the uh, next time we talk will be Saturday afternoon at noon, getting you ready for Miami Hurricane spring practice. Spring game. I don't know how long we're on for. You say an hour and a half. I guess they have the pregame. The pregame for the spring There's no pregame for a pregame. We're on for an hour and a half. Four. Huh? Kickoffs at four for the spring game. Can't be at four. That's what the internet says. I'm going to have to call Joe Zagaki on that one. Because uh, we have Cause a Panther things, game at 5 p.m. things to do. I don't know. On Saturday. That probably are going to get canceled because of the spring game. It's okay. That's okay. But we'll be back, Vlad. Hit us up at Vlad2078. I am at Dan Day Radio. Let's go heat. 
We'll talk to you soon here on Sports Day 560 WQAM. Later, Later fools. fools. I'm Joe Zagacki.